with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. To be the best, one must beat the best. Ovals, road courses, the streets of iconic cities, race after race, the top sim racing IndyCar stars will battle it out. In sim racing, it doesn't get any better than this. This is their battleground for the checkered flag, for the glory, for the right to say they are the best. Cars and stars of the Lionheart IndyCar Series, presented by Butt Kicker, are ready to race. It is the greatest spectacle in all of Lionheart competition. More than 30 of the best drivers in all of open wheel competition on iRacing look to add their names to the record books at the Brickyard. Just one can come away with the checker flag from 4790 West 16th Street in Speedway, Indiana. Who will that person be for 2021? We're about to find out. This is the HyperX Indianapolis 500. Hello everyone and welcome to Racebot TV and ESTV for coverage of the Lionheart Racing Series powered by HyperX, makers of premier gaming gear like the legendary ultra comfortable cloud line of gaming headsets. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers. For more information on HyperX products, visit HyperXGaming.com and don't forget to use the promo code LIONHRT15 for 15% off orders. My name is Justin Prince, along Sami is Renzo Bonder for today's coverage with Hugo Wees in the producer's seat. TV cameras are provided by Istvan Balu and TrackCams22.com with additional car cameras provided by RaceBot's own Tyler Maxson. You can follow along with live timing and scoring by heading to Timing71.org to follow along with your favorite team and drivers in real and virtual worlds of motorsport. Let's dive into our butt kicker pre-race show as we get ready for the first triple crown race of the season Renzo a lot of hype after it a exciting qualifying session just a few days ago. Yeah, we're finally here 200 laps 800 left hand corners seven minimal pit stops. It all comes down to this. We've done the qualifying. The talking is over. Let's get to the action because 200 laps will be very, very frank things. You guys now see the schedule over here. The first of the triple crown event. Yes, indeed, and it has been an intriguing past few months to get here with some great battles, some great strategy, and an interesting Indy GP, to say the very least, with multiple drivers looking to forget how things started off for the month of June here at the Brickyard. But this track brings so much prestige and means so much to the series and its drivers. This race can make or break people's seasons and their careers. Absolutely, because the first thing they have to be thinking is where are you going to be placed in this race and where do you go for it with the points? Because it isn't just points over here. You're talking about double points. And this is the important thing. These points matter. They can shape the entire scope of the championship here, Justin. And again, positioning itself is important. Can't wait to see it. Let's take a look at those driver standings presented by Butt Kicker with Adam Blocker leading the way in the points entering today's action with 455 points on the season. Connor Harrington has 343 points after a rough performance at the Brickyard during the Indy GP. 
But Joshua Chin, Henry Bennett, Ryan Oates just rounds out the top five. Very tight, to say the very least, from second on back entering today's action. And of course, double the points on the line. Yeah, if we're talking about the championship skills in any of, any of the other races, we might have say, all right, that gap that Blocker and Harrington have is pretty much big for you to try to recover. But this is a double or double point event. So if, if Harrington gets a good spot over here, if he gets the win and Blocker has a disastrous race, he can actually close down that gap, maybe contend for Lee, and then you actually can get some places being shuffled up just in the middle of the pack just because you're fighting again for those double points. And it can be very critical for the team standings as well for the respective organizations presented by HyperX as private label team Hype enters today with the team standings. Adrenaline Motorsports had a very strong qualifying performance this past Wednesday. They have 829 points for the red organization, Alcatech Simulations, NHR Esports in third, Graphics LPM, Sector 5 rounding up the top five in the team standings. So in our words, private label team Hype, Adrenaline Motorsports Red looking strong heading into today's round as we head towards your rookie standings once more for today's action those standings presented by butt kicker henry bennett leads the way in the rookie standings he's one of the top qualifiers from wednesday he has 330 points on the season with jason profi lino calisto matt taylor aaron morgan all looking strong so far Lorenzo this season everybody looking really strong over here in this season and again the, this racing is going to be really interesting because the, the position that Brophy, Bennett are right now, I think even Matt Taylor had a really good qualifying, if I recall that correctly, will actually play in the fact of this race. So can't wait to see how it is going to go. But then again, uh, it's 200 laps, everything can place out. And uh, But judging by the standing so far, everything can actually be shuffled just the blink of an eye. Let's take the opportunity to look at your series details presented by Minus 273, the premier name in carding gloves. French Julian gloves are super lightweight and durable, made of breathable poly spandex. With your cart or sim racer, Minus 273 gives you the control to reach victory lane. For more information on Minus 273's full line of gloves and apparel, visit Minus273.biz and don't forget to use the code Minus273LHRS15 for 15% off orders. And one thing to emphasize when it comes to this HyperX Indianapolis 500 custom fix setups with in-car tools available for our drivers. In past editions, those weren't available with fix setups. So it's going to be yep. very critical for drivers to know those adjustments for today. Yeah, especially as they go corner by corner by corner and they're gonna have to tackle it how the race develops. We haven't talked about the weather in this race so far and it is gonna shift a little bit here, Justin. So those in-car adjustments shifting and shifting up and down the weight jackers and also the anti-roll bars will be very important just to keep that car on track and make sure you actually finish this car. Keep in mind this is also the seventh running of the greatest spectacle in racing here for the Lionheart IndyCar Series. Only one driver, Jonathan Goat, has won twice in Speedway, Indiana, and those were in back-to-back -back seasons. Three drivers have a chance of kissing the bricks Join that two-time club today, depending on those performances. Those drivers, Andrew Kinsella, Sage Karam, Adam Blocker, have a chance to make history. And oh, by the way, the closest margin of victory, season one, when there were two different splits, and it was by one one-thousandth of a second Lorenzo. Yeah, basically the closest race we ever had in this championship, but not in this, in this championship and in this running. But I can't wait to see it, you know, the, having the positions if we are to judge Blocker, Kinsella, and Karam, the most of the biggest advantage has to go to Kinsella and Blocker so far just by positioning themselves alone. They are within the top five. Karam is a little bit shuffled back in the top ten, but still can make the moves. And plus, he has the real life experience. He knows how to run this. And, well, he got a top ten over here. So I think that real life experience can help him out a little bit. It's going to be interesting. And don't forget Karam. One of the drivers who charged their way from the back of the field all the way to the front during this year's Herbal at Indianapolis 500. Let's take a look at our track map for today and talk a little bit more about this facility. Indianapolis Motor Speedway, 2.5 miles, open since the 1900s. And it's one of the largest facilities in all of the globe. And while it looks like a rectangle, as you and 
and O'Leary described during the Retro Series broadcast, it's a very challenging track, Lorenzo. It's probably one of the toughest challenges for you to tackle in terms of ovals. It seems really simple, right? Just looking at the oval and the shallow bankings as they go into turn number one, two, three, and four. But the way they tackle these cars, they can shift every single lap because of the the draft, the how the tires are actually responding to you lap by lap, and and that affects you the whole uh, comp like behavior of the car. So even though looks simple when you look at a first glance when you tackle it is a whole different story these drivers just a few moments away from tackling this track for today competition commitment excitement this is flying heart and this is one of the biggest moments of all this season indianapolis motor speedway speedway indiana all set to tackle the hyper x indianapolis 500 and the question is, who will kiss those bricks down the front straightaway when we're all done? Let's find out. Because it's time to head towards your butt kicker starting grid. Drivers now making their way to their cars. They have less than a minute to roll into their cockpits for today's action from Indianapolis, where Adam Blocker set the fastest time in qualifying in the HyperX race for the pole on Wednesday. Henry Bennett will start in second with Jason Brophy in third, Andrew Kinsella in fourth. Brian Carey and Connor Harrington will start in fifth and sixth. Joe Branch starts in seventh with Stephen Larkamp in eighth position with Sage Karam in the ninth position. Chris Stouffer starts in tenth with Chris Fowler and Joshua Chin rounds out your top 12. Tower Graph starts 13 with Jay Brent, Mike Rasmus, and Lionel Kalisto, the top 16, with Ryan Otis deep in the field in 17th. Matt Houston starts in 18th position with James Grujula, 19th. Ron Hacker, Mike Rigney, Ken Hacker, top 22. Aaron Morgan had a rough qualifying run, starts 23rd today with Adam Frazier, 24th. David Martinez, 25th with Scott Holmes, the last of the drivers who took time. The rest of the field either did not qualify or had incidents during the qualifying session. Ricky Harden, Matt Taylor, Brian Beard, Samuel Ryman, the top 30, Luis Gonzalez Nunez, one with Richie Hearn, Tony Shawan, Justin Weaver, Brian Greenlee, your 35 drivers who have made it to the grid in time to start today's action. And as the cars now roll, let's take a look at your featured onboard cameras for the HyperX Indianapolis 500. As the drivers get ready to go, Let's first take a look at Sage Karam, who will be carrying your HyperX on board today. It appears he did not make it to your grid in time. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers, and HyperX is always ready to game. Ryan Otis will drive with the Sim Experience on board. Sim Experience, makers of the AccuForce Pro V2 direct drive steering system. For more information, visit simexperience.com. For Buck Kicker, we have Chris Fowler, the number 20. What you see is what you hear and is what you feel. For more information, visit buttkicker.com. And for uh, Aspo Designs, we have Adam Blocker, the number two car. Get yourself a racing identity. Let's look at your featured onboard cameras. And we have onboard cameras throughout the entire field. Leg to follow the action. It is bad news for Sage Karam, not the start he would have wanted for this race scheduled to start in ninth remember was in last row qualifying and bump day for this year's indianapolis 500 in the real world but our competitors are all set to go competition commitment excitement this is lionheart and this is the start for the HyperX indianapolis 500 the 2021 edition is underway from indianapolis We're under caution already for the first oh. time today. Several more crash. Not the way that our competitors wanted this to start. Not at all. As I'm um, looking over here, I think Justin Weaver got involved. Brian Carey 
Absolutely, like you said, uh, James Krahula got involved as well. So at least two, three cars involved in, in turn number one. The, the cluster that of cars that were basically bunched up together between one and two, that's what caused the crash. A little bit of also uh, arrow wash in turn number one that might affect the issue a little bit as well. A multi-car incident to begin this 500 mile race in the first quarter. An unreal situation as the iRacing pace car is on. Let's take a look at the race spot TV replay. And Kerry got very loose coming through turn one. And you can see that uh, Krahula just got in head and head on first. Couldn't do anything once I try to save it. I think that was the other car might might have been Mike Rigney who's trying to deviate but couldn't save it as well. And after that, I think Luis Gonzalez Nunez actually got touched in the rear and uh, had a little bit of a damage on his diffuser, but I think he got it out pretty much okay from that incident particularly. A disastrous start to the race for many competitors. Chris Fowler already rolling to the pit lane still. Ken Hacker already out of the race. Chris Stouffer, Mike Rigney on the drivers also currently out. Here's the look from Stouffer. Nowhere to go in the secondary incident. Not the way we wanted to kick out the 500, but then again, uh, Justin, that's how the 500 is. Uh, sometimes they, it is scrapped. It is very hard. To, is, it is difficult for you to make the moves and try to organize yourself within a double foul restart. So it's unfortunate, but it, it's racing. So they have to adapt for that. Multiple drivers are still coming down the pit lane to get repairs done and or for service. Joe Branch with a broken right front tire coming down. Ricky Harding coming down to the pit lane as well this time by. Scott Holmes also came down along with Richie Hearn on the drivers taking service during this sequence. And the tough break for Sage Karam is he had great track position for this race. Now he is pinned one lap down as a result of what he confirmed in Sim to be a Sim crash for him when he came to the starting grid. So basically he's in a Scott Dixon like position if you are to compare real world things where Dixon was actually a lap down right in the two uh, in in the last running of the 500 managed to claw himself back but just couldn't get within the victory lane but let's see what Karen does still if if you really want to be a lap down Justin it's it's right here on the first three laps first 10 laps of this race where you can recover yourself eventually and get yourself back within lead lap and then contend Got one more pace lap before we get underway and let's talk a little bit about the HyperX Indianapolis 500 race for the pole that took place. It was a dominant performance for those affiliated with the Dreadwin and their power slide unit as well. Four of the top five starting positions went their way in qualifying and they talked about it where they found the right in-car adjustments to be able to have the pace. It was a very impressive qualifying day for them. Yeah, Kinsella, Kinsella and Blocker was saying that Bennett basically got the adjustments, was actually working for that. Bennett got some really good adjustments. Everybody just follows through. Brian Carey, um, Bennett, Blocker, Kinsella, uh, Bennett himself. So it's not surprising to see all of these four, all those drivers coming into the top four. And um, and you can see now Carey was one of those guys in the top five. You're going to see him on the inside trying to get that's a that's Connor Harrington in front of him. But the way Jackers just way too much, the car steps out of the rear and everything else just breaks loose right behind him. Gets pinballed around by several different competitors who had nowhere to go and were not expecting that in the first short shoot of the race. One go signal now on the racetrack. Adam Blocker, your race leader, Henry Bennett, Jason Brophy, Andrew Kinsella, Connor Harrington now the top five. Several drivers gaining 10 plus positions as a result of multiple pit stops during the caution flag period and repairs. Among the drivers already lapsed down or out, Carroll due to technical issues before the start. Fowler from the incident, Kerry Krahula, Hacker, Stouffer, Rigney all out is Adam Blocker ready to try this again and control the field. 
And just to know here, Justin, this is going to be a little bit more easier for these drivers as they're going to go into the restart. This is single file, so they're not going to be stressed out as on who's be right beside you coming into turn number one and then number two. Then they can actually just themselves set themselves up properly and maybe swap draft and, and things like that. So it's going to be a very interesting first restart for the race. All set to try it again, coming to the start of lap five. My racing pace car is off. Off and away goes Blocker, green flag back up in the air. Good launch from Adam Blocker as we'll see how drivers make their way through turn one this time. All single file except for the very back of the pack. Karam already going for uh, Harry Bennett on the inside, so the number number two car is not holding back one bit. He wants that lap back. Already Bennett shuffled around. Karam wanting that lap back right now. Will Blocker give it to him? Yes. And Blocker gives Karam the lead lap back for now. It's a matter of how Blocker now plays this with the amount of draft, especially down this racetrack. Now, talking about that weather you talked about a little bit before, fairly decent amount of grip today. 107 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 degrees Fahrenheit is the air temp today. Winds currently gusting at four miles an hour. That is currently blowing towards the turn three entry at the moment. So not too much wind of a factor today. Weather looking nice and consistent today. Yeah, not a hot track whatsoever, Justin, so the drivers can adapt a little bit. I, uh, but I'll be very honest, I don't know for peak temperature over here. We can see the weather going up a few Fahrenheit degrees. But uh, so far, really comfortable race for everybody as we see Connor Harrington trying to sell himself in. So far, he can be in a comfortable position just behind his teammate of Jason Brophy. And this is the important thing, getting yourself into a rhythm and trying to set the tempo. Arrow wash is a major factor here at this racetrack. It should be worth noting, by the way, that Karam was passed on by my blocker. Ryan Otis, you're now falling on board with. The Synergy Motorsports Silver Machine stayed in this line in 11th position. It's a plus six after being able to avoid the trouble. You can see with the gyros, well, how much banking there is here, about nine degrees, which may not sound like a lot, but it is a lot when you're carrying these speeds of more than 220 miles an hour through the corners. Yeah, it's, it, again, doesn't look like much here, Justin, but those bankings can be intimidating whenever you are on draft. And again, one of the things that uh, we haven't mentioned, this is a fixed, custom fixed setup, so it's not open to where you can actually go and, to, and go for whatever preference you want to go for in terms of setups you have to adapt to what you got and you gotta have to put those laps in and knowing Lionheart they put up the practicers for you to actually adapt this nice you guys now see the not a confusion but uh, the shuffle of positions in the middle back of the pack with Tony Shawan uh, losing one spot in 20th first Of course, one of the drivers who came down to the pit lane during the caution flight period. Let's take this opportunity to remind drivers and fans alike about the fuel strategy today, Lorenzo, because yep. in the solo run, drivers could go 28, 29 laps, but with a max amount of fuel save, drivers can go as long as 35 laps for this HyperX Indianapolis 500 this year. Yeah, they can go up to 35, maybe like if you're really aggressive and you want to go alexander rossi already at the very start of this race you might go up to 36 37 but then it, you would lose so much time in the process that it, it isn't worth it for you to actually go for that so the max range we might be able to see is 35 and they're gonna have to adapt to that so we might be seeing our first pit service come down right about lap when yeah, lap 32 33 if i have to estimate that correctly don't forget there was the caution period that's going to extend that possibly by a couple laps as well. As you're looking as Chin trying to utilize the outside, it's been talked about of, in turns one and three, you can make the outside work here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yep. You just need to time it up right. Yeah, you, you need a certain overlap already into the entry of turn number one and three. 
in a little bit of negotiation with the other driver to lift off the gas a little bit into the exit out of three and heading into four to let the other individual go by. But if you want to force it, you can actually force it, but you, you would be riding very closely to the wall, so you can actually make the space in there. Seen there that chin that was able to make the move on the high side as we look back to Tyra Graf. Graphics LPM machine does a lot of work for Lionheart Racing Series competition with the graphics for the series and whatnot. He's looking to have some incredible racing action today. He was one of the drivers in the Retro Series on Thursday who was a contender at one point before having a long pit stop sequence and getting crashed in the second pack while trying to move up to the front of that respective group during a long run that had stretched for that race to 77 laps for Enzo on Thursday. And that is unfortunate. And in this race specifically, I think this is more important than the, than the, previous, than the previous race in the Retro Series because Graf and his entire team need a good result because if you have to look at the Indy GP where they were third in the standings, they didn't perform well as they wanted to, allow the Alcantex simulations to come in and grab that third spot for them in the team standings. So, the double points again are going to be factored on this one. Let's see what the position will be for the drivers at the end of the race and uh, see if the graphics can actually make the jump once again. Absolutely going to be very critical here as should be worth noting that Chin has tracked down Andrew Kinsella just up the road from Tyler Graf. And that's now made this a battle for fifth position. Chin nearly to the back ear box. In fact, trying to build up that run. Now able to take it side by side down the straightaway as Kinsella gives him the space. And Chin is not looking like he's afraid to make passes. He wants track position to get back up to Harrington. And if you wanted to test it going on the outside with this cousin fix setup, hey, it works. So you can actually build up a little bit of a confidence. Now you're going to have to build up a little bit of a gap because right now you were right about six tenths of a second away from uh, Connor Harrington at this current moment. So, so far what, what we got is basically adrenaline power slide in P1, adrenaline motorsport red in P2. And then a triple crown of uh, private label team hype in three, four, five. Looking for the back gearbox now from Harrington. The private label team hype machines all lined up to storm, by the way, third through fifth position. Incredible season for the organization here in Lionheart competition. A very talented driver lineup, a very talented organization looking to make some waves as Matt Houston. Looking to try and make some waves from the 14th position. Yeah, it was continuing right there with uh, Matt Taylor for P4, P13, P14. But Matt Taylor actually selling that, uh, that position kind of like expensive for Matt Houston right now. And let's take this opportunity, in fact, to talk a little bit about Taylor because very strong season for Taylor this campaign. One top five. Four top tens on the season, speed in every Lionheart competition he's taken part in. One of the hard chargers for the Retro Series race here with the butt kicker Indy 250 this past Thursday. He's someone that has a lot of talent and is one of the great stars of open wheel racing over the past year or so in Lionheart competition, Lorenzo. And he's a guy that we should be keeping an eye on because he's improving every single race in the ovals. You know he's fast. You know he's kind of fast in the road the courses that he actually can get some really good results but ovals is it being a guy that you know constantly improving getting those results and can be a staple uh, for the alcantax simulations in further down the line but a really good driver so far i think he's the biggest gainer in the field at this current moment up 15 positions you're right about that next closest is brian beard who's up 12 positions who started towards the rear of the field among your non-qualifiers from Wednesday's HyperX Indianapolis 500 race for the pole. As these drivers continue to get into a rhythm here, we're about halfway or so through the field run. It should be worth noting that Adam Blocker and Sage Karam have continuously swap drafted up at the very point of the field. That's built them up as much as a nine-tenths of a second buffer to Henry Bennett, especially in turns one and two. And this is what you have to do as a driver, is utilize the swap draft in if you're the race leader. 
and this is a continuous back and forth that can happen. It's only this time, it's with Sage Karam, a lap down car, who needs a bit of luck with the timing of these swaps with the caution flag. Yeah, and let's see where Karam would be located with the yellow flag, because so far, he's within a good, really good position. Not being contended by Adam Blocker uh, partially, they're just swapping places. I think Bennett is in a position where he can be really comfortable, you know, do not, do not push the car. We know that being the third car back in a pack can not be the easiest thing for you to actually move up. Pretty much going to be staying within the pack because of the air wash. So you can actually be staying back, save some fuel, try to work that 35 mile, or 35 lap range that you want to go for in terms of fuel. Be comfortable with it for the remainder that you actually have, that you actually have to do. Rem remembering, you have to do minimum of seven pit stops to make it to the end of this race which is a lot of pit stops here at this racetrack, and it can be so easy to botch the strategy because several drivers did that for the Retro Series. You don't want to do it here for the 500-mile race either, though, Lorenzo. Yeah, you really, don't want to, you, you really don't want to get your numbers wrong, and I wouldn't be surprised if many of these teams, and they have spotters, they have engineers, like in-race engineers, not just for the drivers, but the whole team, just going with them lap by lap by lap, what they have to do, what the fuel range should be for that particular stint and other paces in comparison to the other, uh, you know, the other drivers in the field. It looks like a simple race for some of the people who are watching over, over here at home, over at your home or something like that. But the, the complications or the complexity for these drivers, it's a whole different thing. It, it, this is a real thing. A lot of work was put in to match the sim to the realism required here at this track. And the aero wash in particular is a major factor we talked about that is one of those things that have really been additionally added over the past few seasons or so across iRacing competition and official yeah. racing in particular. It can be really seen when you're matching line to line because it can be so difficult to follow a line stern even if you're up towards the front because the amount of wash can force you to have to lift and it ends up sliding the tires. Harrington lost a lot of time, for example, just a lap ago as a result of that aero wash. Yeah, it's one of those funny things. I was talking to Christian Steele about this uh, for another league that we were doing a 500 edition, that the, the easier thing for you to do is close in. Again, if you're if you're the, two, the first two cars within the draft, train you can actually swap places that's the easiest thing for you to do if you're farther back you kind of have to negotiate how you're actually going to approach this because approaching is one thing getting close to it but overtaking is a whole different story because the air wash is so big especially when that when you're up that close that the car can just behave a whole different way that you're not expecting it can catch you off guard and whatever you call are caught off guard some bad something bad can happen for you and a pit stop for Lionel Callisto from 13th position. So something going on with the 97. This is an early pit stop or way earlier than we were expecting. All right. Really interested to see if uh, Callisto has uh, wanted to go for a short stand over here and try to minimize the time loss. They probably would have to the end of the race. Uh, different strategies are already being played out at the beginning of the race. I expect that more to the middle of the pack than anything else. Extended pit stop time. I think he may have scraped the wall possibly in the side Ooh. in one of the short shoots possibly. Because here's the thing, you make contact with the wall, it can break your suspension quickly. You can see already the service 27 seconds. Yeah, I think the suspension might be broken right there. And further, furthermore, I think your engine can actually uh, be unrecoverable, irrecoverable. So if, if you touch with the side pod, it damages the engine, it damages a little bit of the heat dissipator as well on the sides, and you do not get those speed, that speed back, like those miles, three, four, five miles back uh, in your stand. So Callisto now is at least one plus lap down as a result of having to take an unscheduled pit stop. We're now in the 25th lap of 200. It's 500 mile race. And as the private label team hype machines are trying to keep within range of Henry Bennett still on the racetrack. They have been reeled in by their teammate Joshua Chin, by the way, to make it a threesome. Amongst their organization among the top five in the main pack.
And we talked about the arrow wash. Harrington trying to utilize that high line to get himself away from that arrow, prevent that arrow push from the back end of his teammate after losing so much time before. Yeah, and again, it's complicated because whenever you're in the back of someone, the air wash is so different that he probably had to have to take a high line. You guys just saw Harrington, you know, driving the high line, trying to avoid as much, as best as he can that uh, air wash he's going to get from Brophy on the inside line. It's still be efficient with the drive because you can make up everything during the long straights here at Indianapolis. So not surprised whatsoever uh, seeing uh, the, th the second car of a what would be a three car team a three team car draft taking the high line to avoid a, a air wash and understeer that car into a wall starting to sneak their way down the front straightaway as well with the big amount of draft that can come into play because chin's made it clear he wants to pounce if he's got the opportunity how will he handle harrington if he gets the opportunity is a big question as he stays within three car lengths of him for the time being as we approach our first window. The swap drafting, by the way, has stopped at the front of the field because Sage Karam has been able to build up a buffer you can see up the road from Adam Blocker. Blocker's actually lost three, four car lengths now as the tires have worn out. Or Blocker's just trying to play, you know, as defensive as he can. Uh, not defensive, but a conservative as he can try to save fuel, allow Karen to beat the hair because he's a lap down and he's just as fast as Blocker is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just let Karen guide you as much as you can. Go to lap 32, 33. So, where Karen might have to go to pit and uh, Blocker can maximize the fuel range for that car. Go to map 4, 3, maybe 5 if you're feeling comfortable with that, and then go to full range. Let's talk a bit about the fuel maps. How critical are those for a race such as this to make sure you have those dialed in and when you choose what fuel maps for what situation? So this is this is something interesting as we're seeing. Karen just weaving into, to, into the start finish line to try to break away from Blocker a little bit. So basically map one is full attack. You, it's, the, it's the fuel mode that you're going to have the most horsepower and horse torque uh, to make it to maximize your fuel and go for those overtakes map two and three you can actually go for that but you have to negotiate a little bit but you save uh, uh maybe an ounce or something like that in terms of fuel four and five for basically conservative modes five is full conservative you don't go over six and seven because these are for road modes and eight is for pace car so whenever you see a pace car they're not going to be on anything else than mode eight well, those very critical to know for when to utilize those mappings as of note. Ron Hacker has elected to come on and pit the Synergy Motorsports Blue Machine in his blue car. Starting off the window, start of lap 30 for his pit stop. Interesting time for Hacker on his own. And do you prefer to pit with... A group of cars or on your own for a track like this in your opinion Renzo especially with the impact of the draft group how big yeah. of a group then so this is one of the interesting things right for me the bigger the group the better because and I mean this in the middle portion of a race right if you get to lap 150 people say that if you get to 167 that's where is the key go the key range where you want to go in terms of being in the front if you're at 167 168 and maybe small group like one two three cars so you can swap caps and stay within the leader other than that it can be in four or five groups when you wouldn't have a major time loss because all the time basically all the main overtaking points will be in the pit lane whenever the leaders come down or the whole the whole pack actually comes down into the pit lane or so for their services. All that's going to be so critical for this race, too, to think about as well as Chin. We see trying to utilize the bottom still in this grouping that is currently two seconds behind your race leader at the moment, Adam Blocker. He continues to ride and say, we're inside that first fuel mark of the race. Keep in mind that Ricky Harden, Scott Holmes, Tony Schaumann, 
Samuel Ryman, David Martinez, Justin Weaver, Brian Greenlee, Luis Gonzalez, Nunez, and Richie Horn, and go an extra couple laps on their respective stint as they pit under caution. So that's something to keep in mind when these drivers start peeling down in the next couple laps. And, uh, and those off strategies can be quite interesting. We saw that even in the top split uh, a month ago, right, Justin? Where those off strategies can play up a little bit. And you guys are now seeing Damon Martinez coming into bit lane. That's Chris uh, Sage Cameron now missing the pit box. Something might have happened to Damon right here. Not what Martinez would have wanted. He had to back up and re enter the pit box. That cost him at least a few seconds on the racetrack. He was in the back grouping. Larkamp is also elected to come down in pit this time with Matt Taylor. So the Elkin Tech machines at the end of the, end of the lane, starting their respective windows, Sage Carum has also come down to pit for fuel. Yeah, we kind of expected for Karim to come into this lap from other guys coming in. Tyler Graff will come in. Now you can see Martinez overshooting his pit box and not knowing what, what we would do now, trying to get himself lined up. Losing some time in there, about three seconds total, as now we're seeing the leaders come to the pit lane. Locker, Bennett, Brophy, Chin, all in this time by. While Tyver Graff, Ryan Otis joining them in the pit lane. It's a pit party. Has no major issues down on the entry for any of the drivers. It's just a matter of making themselves into their boxes. Drivers have been very tight against that pit exit for some of these drivers as Bennett ends up overrunning his stall. Henry Bennett will lose some time and will lose some spots as Brophy spins it into the wall. Wow. And Jason Brophy is stuck along the edge of the pit lane. Now he backs up into the lane after spinning it out, coming out of his box, had a chance to move up to second or third position before the mistake. Oh, this is disastrous. Just taking a look at what happened to Brophy over here. Gets out of the pit lane. And I think too much gas on the exit out of his pit stall. And the problem is, I think he actually broke his wing over here, Justin. So he's going to have to come down into pit lane once again to repair that wing. Surely he will be bumped all the way back. And that's the one thing you really don't want to do this early on in the race. Let's take a look at it one more time. As soon as he comes off the jacks, watch the lighting of the tire spin. Wow. And the reason he stays there is if he backs up, he's backing up right into the midst of traffic and potentially damaging their cars. As more drivers come to the lane, Richie Hearn having to dodge several cars to make his way to his box. And he ends up over shooting his stall too. Uh, there, there might be, uh, I think, an explanation to this because the, the pit stalls, they're not the easiest for one for you to actually go and stop appropriately because you barely use any brakes in this race. Like, I think you don't even use brakes in the in the in the in the, in the course, but uh, you only use it whenever you're coming to the pit lane and breaking the car appropriately, as we're seeing. Justin Weaver, which was the last car that needed to come into the pit lane. The thing is, whenever you come into your pit stall, the brakes are still trying to build up heat and you, it's easy to lock, so you need to let off the gas and just cruise around until you can get to your pit stall and then not slam the brakes, but go gently on the brakes and just let the car brake itself, right? And whenever you're coming out, the tires are still not appropriately hot, so you need to be very easy, about 50% into the throttle on the outside, and then gradually increase that uh, that throttle so you avoid the wheel spin when you come out of the pit stall. So unfortunate mistakes, but they do happen sometimes in these uh, top conditions. As a result of that mistake, by the way, Brophy, 26th position being inside the top five much of the way. So again, a tough break for Brophy. 
Adam Blocker has taken the race lead back. And Joshua Chin will be passed by Andrew Kinsella now in turn one into the short shoot. Those drivers right now for third and fourth. Already more than four, two, three seconds behind Blocker and Connor Harrington, who is within drafting distance of your race leader. And look at here, Connor had the best, had the second best pit stall in the top five here. 35.5 for the private label team hype driver. The best one was Stephen Larkin, which actually jumped from P8 to P5 with those mistakes. So Larkin now a factor in this race. Impressive from Larkin is impressive for Harrington, who was able to stretch it an additional lap as well on the fuel. Keep in mind, Blocker is staying in line still behind Sage Karam, who is at the tail end of the lead lap in the 28th position. 160 laps to go. And now it's the matter of how these drivers play things out here. And it's going to be interesting once Harrington tries to get there, how things fare out as some of the other drivers continue to stay within a rhythm, while others try and utilize that second line to be able to build up a run for position. That's Fowler, or rather one more driver trying to make the move down the straightaway. That was Taylor rather in, around Joe Branch. Lap traffic, which is now starting to play a factor. Yeah, and it's interesting to see a traffic, you know, becoming a factor right now in this track because the lap is right about 41 seconds, but this middle of the pack, everybody's team is still bunched up, one together, separated. Each and every car you can see right in the back of the team, that is, uh, Mike Rasmus and Matt Houston were battling for position for the entry of turn number three. But uh, they're split up basically in average right about a half a second in between the in, in between each driver. The only disparity is actually Connor Harrington and Kinsella and Joshua Chin as we're looking to Ricky Harden uh, coming to the pit lane once again. Apparently he has some issues and that and that wheel looks a little bit bent to the side. Maybe suspension damage for the Cerisi Merch Esports driver. Not what he would have wanted as for Ricky Harden. Gonna cost him more time on the track. The reason he had to come down, the short shoot in turns one and two, which can provide massive attrition points. We've seen it already at the start, but also from drivers just pushing up the racetrack and hitting the outside wall. Now Larkin moving into P4 here, Judge. And he's not having the best running of his second stint so far now in Henry Bennett actually might catch him. So let's assume that Joshua Chin is on a different strategy over here than the other drivers, not wanting to go full attack. Just, you know, trying to save as much fuel as you can possibly save and try to gain an edge on the other drivers. Yeah, that's going to be very critical to see how things play out for that as side by side between Bennett and Chin now. Henry Bennett, remember, overshot his pit box. And passes on by Chin as Chin continues to utilize that second and third lane compared to Bennett performing the bottom of the racetrack. By the way, this is what happened to Ricky Harden in the short shoot of turns one and two. Hard hit to the right side, immediately breaks the steering. Uh, this for Ricky Martin, knowing that Ricky is one of these drivers that had a really, really promising qualifying, didn't make it, actually spun out of the very last corner, I think it was on his last lap, so seeing that going from back to worse is really heartbreaking for Ricky Harden right now. Absolutely, it's not the night he has wanted to have so far. Now for Ricky Harden, he is one lap down, 29th position. Tower Graf continuing his ascension to the field. Meanwhile, it's reeled right on into Chin. Ryan Otis and Jay Brandt also doing some good jobs to drive to the pack. You see them from behind. But Chin, this is, this is for me is appalling a little bit because normally we would see the king of Chins, you know, just trying to dominate this kind of a race, you know, wanting to be within top five. Draw, seeing him drop back 
further and further more into the into the into the gridding. Now being overtaken by Tyler Graf. There is Ryan Otis and Jay Brent behind. I'm I'm assuming there is something going on with that purple private label team hype car. Yeah, Chin currently going only 226 miles an hour during the straightaways, backing off to 207 in the corners. Here's the on board. And he's going to be overtaken by Otis on the inside. He, you might be able to see the tip of the wing of Otis on the left-hand side as he goes into turn number one right now. And Otis actually dipped a little bit on the wall, but it isn't something major right now. Chin nearly up towards the wall, in fact, as well as side by side. Otis trying to clear on by in the bottom. Still the pole being picked up by Chin on the outside line. Side by side, still for position. And clear on by this time to the corner is Otis. So move Chin back to eighth position, seven seconds back. Chin is only running 42 threes. The majority of the field in the 41 fives to nines. Meanwhile, I think something we should be looking up in the front as well is now Harry Bennett makes the move on Stephen Larkham. The gap that a Kinsella has to Karin Harrington is actually coming down bit by bit. And now we are back to Shin getting pressure by Jay Brent right now on the back stretch. Jay Brent building up the run, going to the inside. King of Chins again, letting him on go. And what do you think the play is here for Chin as he continues to drop further and further back here on the racetrack? If I'm Chin, I will try to figure out what is going on. Unless he's a strategy of, you know, letting everybody back and then clawing himself back up on the second half of the race. But for me, it's really weird. Oh, oh. The, this is not good. He just hit the wall. Joshua Chin continuing to have a disastrous stint here. Now passed by Matt Taylor as well. Continuing to fall further and further back, nearly hitting the wall again in the short shoot. This is not gone Chin's direction. Oh, by the way, should be worth noting the track temperature as the instant time is now 1.26 p.m. Has skyrocketed up to 123 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, it was 107 just a little while ago. Remember when I said that uh, we were probably worried on temperature when we started this race, Justin? I was right. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing I can tell you definitely from Chin, he's not going to get the speed back. If, if that damage is what I think it is, you're not, you're not going to see the side pod dangling like you see sometimes whenever they actually hit the wall. But that kind of, that kind of a scrap on the wall, it's enough for you to lose about five miles effectively on your car and five miles on the ir18 on a track that you basically go to 328 up to 232 on draft is the one thing you really don't want to have it as he gets probably on turn number one driver behind by the way is mike rasmus trying to make the move at the moment that's now rasmus with the big run down the straightaway only 220 at the end of the straightaway for Joshua Chin as well. Yep. Chin uh, has that scrap. To... Go ahead. That scrap. That pretty much tells us that the, the scrap. Well, it's what causing the the major loss of time. And I said he's not going to get it back. Yeah, this is not what he wanted at all at this point. Right now, the next driver behind Matt Houston and Aaron Morgan, who's made his way up 10 positions right on behind. By the way, for your race leaders, Connor Harrington dropped from half a second back to more than a second behind once he got in the arrow wash of Karam and Blocker at the very point of the field. So the lead has separated out. Laura Camp has dropped more than seven seconds behind Henry Bennett as well on the racetrack. As here is Ryan Otis, meanwhile, who continues to have an impressive season in Lionheart IndyCar Series, learning about these cars as the season has gone on. He's been great on the road courses. 
but the luck hasn't spread a lot of times to the oval. So far this season, three top fives, five top tens for Otis. And the majority of his top fives actually came at the road courses, his first one being at the Watkins Glen boot course. But he's building up some respectable results in the ovals because he got a seventh place in Kentucky. He got a P8 in Phoenix. So the short ovals that he's actually making the, the, the ground up. So we, let's see how he does on a really super speedway because this is the first real fast speedway they're actually tackling which is actually larger than two miles actually larger than a mile and a half correction absolutely as near close contact here in over the radio of Luis Gonzalez Nunez just moments ago trying to make a run on Chris Fowler who is in 30th after Fowler hit the outside wall down the front straightaway no caution, we stay green. Nunez was able to dodge by Fowler, who continues to run his way around the track. And somehow, somewhere, uh, I'm surprised to see Fowler uh, not actually getting Nunez with that touch, but um, that was a scary moment, nevertheless. And Fowler, you talked about the speeds only hitting 218 miles an hour down the straightaways after being involved in the first incident of the race. As well, Chin has been cycled to 13th position with his issue. Yeah, basically everything that Chin conquered in the first 10, he's basically lost it because he started P12, right? Uh, just, and for us, it's weird as you guys now gonna see the incident with doing is and Fowler. Fowler, I think he wanted to give a little bit more room than expected. But uh, basically grinding the wall, caught Nunez nearly off guard, but a uh, good die, good avoidance from Nunez on the inside line. Nunez 21st position, definitely having a scary moment there. He's 21 seconds behind your race lead battle at the moment. Look and to Chin once more. Go ahead, Renzo. Now, what is it for us? The, the, this is the weird thing for Chin, right? That uh, for a 500 race, Dean Joshua Chin underperforming. This is underperforming for Joshua Chin because we know he's a really good driver and he actually won the top split 500 in 29, 2018. So seeing him getting shuffled back lap by lap by lap on the gridding, it's not it's not unusual. It's very uncommon. So I hope he bounces back, but it look it's looking bleak. Not the start he wanted to this first half of the race after charging his way up to the pack before. Ron Hacker now also within range to pass by him as up in front. They do have Ricky Harden, they also reeled in in terms of lap traffic. Andrew Kinsella, it should be worth noting, has also reeled his way within drafting distance of Connor Harrington up at the very front of the field in the battle for the top three. You see those cars now make their way around the traffic. Yeah, they made it around Ricky Harden, but they nearly face the same, uh, same situation that the New England faced with Fowler because Harden actually grinded the wall a little bit and got a little bit slowed down. And uh, the driver had to deviate a little bit. And because of kinetic force, Harden was actually pushed off a little bit into the inside lot of the track, but everybody managed to avoid it. Here is an interesting situation. Ron Hacker has called over the radio. He is coming into pit after a second stint of about 23 laps, rather 29 laps this time. Remember, he pit earlier than the rest of the field before. So Ron Hacker is burning a lot of fuel in that 21 machine, it seems. I think he's burning basically map one all the way. He's not trying to save one bit. I wouldn't be surprised as he misses his pit stall here, Justin, but he's one of those drivers that uh, has not been able to actually get a really good running so far. Well, Hacker losing at least a few seconds in the pit lanes. We take a look at Samuel Ryman, who is up 13 positions. One of the drivers who did not take part in qualifying on Wednesday, but looking for his first top 10 of the season he's known as a sim racing broadcaster for the global sim racing channel as well looking very sporty here in this race tonight lorenzo
Currently, he's 20 seconds behind your race leader. He is oh, also Mike trying to close to Chun Shallon. Yes, indeed. <laughs> my, 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 my apologies. You know, these are marvelous things of sim racing, but uh, having a really solid race so far, you can see what Ryman might be able to pull off, but uh, still seven over positions away from P10. But again, those pit stops we've been talking about, those are big difference makers. If you can actually get out along with, along with some other guys, as we're seeing Chin in the pit lane, he can make up those spots pretty much easily. Boy, a 26 lap stint though is the interesting thing after the amount of time lost on the racetrack. So Chin taking a gamble here. We'll see how long the pit stop is into his box and on the jacks. And for Chin, it's an extended stop. So he did have something wrong with that race car. He's having to get repairs done in the pit lane. Yeah, and uh, he's going to be shuffled. My estimate is probably going to be shuffled back about two laps back from the leader. I don't know if he's going to be able to actually get those laps back. It's going to be real, a really tough challenge. But more importantly, I, I already said it. If he actually gets the side pod damage and that it eventually damages the engine, he did not get the speed back. So it's going to take an even human effort from the King of Chins to actually get back within contendable spots. Chin already has lost a couple laps in the pit lanes. We're following along with Damon Martinez, by the way, on the racetrack. He is currently 20th position, plus five on his race. And we talked about him a little bit during qualifying day, Lorenzo. Your thoughts on Damon Martinez as a driver? A uh, really good driver for the ovals as we've now seen Martinez come into the pit lane. I just want to take a look and see if he actually had some uh, solid results. I think he had a top five, a top 10 result in this championship but it's a driver that we cannot count out even though he's in an off strategy than some of the other drivers and i think in a race like this if sage karen wanted the partner to work with up with the leaders i think david martinez needs to build up some steam and pick up some places sage karen coming in 30 laps for their stint and chin by the way the amount of damage on his car how about a minute and 39 seconds repairs to put him a couple laps down. He's finally off and away. We'll see how that car now fares, but it's now a spot where he's going to need to hope for some attrition for valuable points. Larkamp is also now in for his service, now down in the lane. So the window's open for the second time in this race today. Yeah. It's going to be tricky because now I'm seeing some separation between the drivers who are still within their stints, right? So getting closer to one driver to another is going to be really complicated as we're seeing now Bennett coming to the pit lane. He's one of, he was one of those drivers who did 28, 29 laps. So it, we're starting to see it, the, maybe the 20 line and 29 laps then becoming a little bit of a trend on this second, third, and maybe fourth stint. And at this time, much more careful into the pit box, by the way, as Adam Blocker tries to lap Lionel Kalisto and does. That's the 27th place car. He just passed on by. See how further along Blocker can go on this respective stint. Harrington still staying within range. One more car boxing on in. And Taylor Jory completed his service. Tower Graf has come on in for his respective service. He was the car peeling off. Now let's see if another car come on. There's one more car, Matt Houston, coming in as well here, Justin. So it's starting to get a little bit busy into the pit lane. I expect this lap to be the busiest on pit lane if I, my calculations are correct. I think so too, based on what we've seen throughout this race so far. Graf, 10 seconds in the pit lane. He's off and away for his respective service. Sam Ryman has indicated he's coming in this time by as well as Aaron Morgan. So those drivers indeed will make it busy. The race leaders aren't ducking down quite yet though. As they continue to extend the run a little bit further. Ryan Otis is now off and away and into the lane. Mike Rasmus also following him. Yeah, so we're starting to see some of the guys at the top 10 starting to be ducking into the pit lane. Looking at Justin Bieber, Ryan Beard as well into the lane and, and uh, nothing about Adam Blocker, Connor Harrington, Kinsella. So I think Kinsella might be able to save a little bit of fuel over here, stretch it out to 33 laps maybe. Let's see, because he's right behind Connor Harrington as we see now the leader coming to the lane. 
Harrington trying to gain some time in the pit lane. You see that later on the brakes. Both of them now into the lane for the respective stops. Jay Brandt also coming in for service. Andrew Kinsella was able to extend it a little bit further. Remember, he extended the run a little bit longer last time as into the box go both of the drivers. Neutral pit stops, by the way, during this race today, 9.6 to 9.8 seconds on average as Harrington come off and away with a 9.8 and 9.9 for blocker off and away they go near identical in the box in the lane they'll stay near even separation down the access road yeah you know how much connor harrington actually gained on the pit lane against blocker how one much? tenth of a one tenth of a second mm -hmm. that's about it on the racetrack, though, Blocker had the better launch coming off the access road, I noticed, though, Renzo was yeah. able to pick up an extra few tenths. Yeah, it, the the access road, it, there is a little bit of an interesting aspect into it. You can be very aggressive. Sometimes you can nearly go on the track, depending on circumstances, like on the very bottom of the portion of between one and two, and still be safe with it relatively. As we're seeing now, Kinsella coming out of the pit lane, I think he might be able to get some jump on Connor Harrington on the exit of the access road. But if you drive it aggressively, you can actually make up the ground a little bit. Harrington's able to still drive on by, but as you can see the difference now, two seconds on your race leaders with the lap car in between of Joe Branch. So far, the majority of the laps have been led by the one machine, Adam Blocker. What a dominating performance and dominating week so far. Nailed qualifies the only driver in his time bracket at the quickest time in the session. In terms of four lap average, and now he's put himself into this spot where he has had the dominating pace. Justin Weaver has closed out this respective window. And on lap 69, it's Blocker back to the race lead. Now, let's see how long they would go. We saw about 30, 30, 32 laps in average for top 10, about 29 to 30 within the middle of the pack. This is going to be really interesting because I'm starting to see the leaders. Maybe looking towards that lap 168 with brighter eyes. Uh, maybe 164, depending on circumstances. You know, thinking, oh, maybe we can actually make that and uh, play conservative over here with Teal. But then again, he is free to get a 168, 167, make it safely with Teal. New fastest lap of the race just sent by Kinsella, by the way, as Scott Holmes. Now looking to battle with the car off the pit lane. Scott Holmes side by side, in fact, still with Justin Weaver, who is looking to hold on to that position. Keep in mind, Justin Weaver, up 17 positions from his starting spot, started at the very back of the field for this one. And it's a clear case example of, you know, even though you might be in the back, right, everybody has a shot. Uh, in this race, everybody has a winning chance in this race. It's not. It isn't just first who actually has a chance. I think we only had one winner coming from the pole position in this race, which is Rick Music, which was the season one, which was also the closest winners uh, we had in Lionheart by one thousand of a second. But still, you have it. Everybody has a chance. You just have to play your cards right, and the strategy has to be on point. And maybe the L fights help out a little bit. Don't forget the most late changes as well. Was we'll set back in season seven with Kinsella with 67, but today has been leaning more towards the fewest, where it's been 36. Set back in season three. That's been the intriguing part of this race today. Harrington, by the way, has now lost an additional second. He's three seconds back. Kinsella's within drafting distance of him. And Kinsella has one of the fastest laps of the race of 41 flat last time by. Yeah. I don't. I really don't see if Connor Harrington will want to defend that. If he wants to, he really want to work something out because their gap is starting to build up a little bit to Adam Blocker. Blocker is actually three seconds away from both drivers. I think uh, Kinsella might want to share some draft with the private label team Hive Driver if they actually want to be within the drafting range of uh, the number one car of Adam Blocker. see what happens here for these respective competitors 
and Andrew Kinsella, keep in mind, puts in a lot of work for Lionheart competition with the setups in particular. It's incredible the work that he does to be able to build these cars week in, week out for the series. Yeah, and setups that actually are not just fast, but they are very runnable as well. So you nice to see Adrenaline and Motorsports Red uh, getting some good setups, everybody. I haven't seen any complaints whatsoever from the drivers, so really nice to see that uh, those setups are really good for every running that we had so far in the season. See from the onboard utilizing the sixth gear at the moment as traffic says hello. Uh, by the lap traffic easily, but it did lose Kinsella some time. I know we're not making time, eight tenths of a second doesn't look like much, but if you get those back, you just have to maybe drive a little bit more aggressively than normal. Pretty good within drafting range once again of Todd Harrington, but the gap is coming down. 2.8 seconds separates right now, Blocker and Harrington. One of the drivers who has really impressed me, though, is Brian Beer. How about his run today for his car? One of the drivers who didn't qualify, he's up to 11th position. It's a plus 18 for Beer. You can just see utilizing the fourth gear oh. as well in the short shoe. Pardon me, Anzo. Yes. No, sorry, it's me because I was talking with the microphone muted again. Uh, but uh, get to see Beer, you know, coming from 29th, clawing himself off, uh, back up into top, nearly top 10 spot. And actually, he's challenging Matt Houston at the moment to try to get that top 10 spot. And he's not enough cycle strategy from the other drivers as well. So uh, seeing him being a contender in this race is very, very entertaining to see. But that fourth gear is interesting i never see a guy driving fourth gear on a track like this yeah right now they're running 41 sixes for them and the race leaders at the moment And very impressive to see the drive through the pack the biggest movers up 19 are tony shawan and matt taylor who are 14th and 9th, respectively. And it can be hard to gain all that time on the racetrack, but it takes the right amount of execution, not just in terms of passing, but in terms of strategy, in terms of luck. All of it has to go your right way for you to gain those spots. Yeah, you, you do. You need to be very... Um, I'm not going to say time-sensitive, but I'm, I'm going to say uh, very accurate on what you do every single lap that you actually take over here i've been told the main passing opportunities if you are if you're not on draft will be on the pit lane because everybody will get bunched up once again and maybe yellow flag will be the main overtaking opportunity because how you enter the pit lane and how you exit the pit lane how aggressive you are into it but uh we haven't had a single yellow flag aside the lap the lap one instead so you're probably going to have to resort on your own arm and, and feet to try to negotiate the overtakes and then move up some spots. Indeed, and as a result, what goes through your mind as a driver when you don't qualify well or don't put in a qualifying time here at this racetrack to say, okay, how do I get myself there to that race lead from, say, 29th? Um, I'm, I would say personally, I would be, I would feel very comfortable because I would have no pressure whatsoever trying to make those moves, right? Uh, I would just take lap by lap by lap and have fun. If I find the opportunity to make the overtake, I will make that overtake work and uh, and try to distance myself away. And but if you cannot do something like that, just stay back. Maybe hope for a yellow flag to switch things up a little bit, but. If you have situations like we're having right now, just full flat uh, every single corner, try to work yourself out and maybe see where you're gonna be uh, at the end of the day. And fun is so critical to remember, Renzo, for a race such as this, because if you're not having fun, it can impact performance, it can yep. impact how you run the track, it can impact your, your aggressiveness on the circuit. All that is so very critical when it comes to driving around the circuit as 
if you don't time yourself up well with that, it can end up hurting you so much on the racetrack. Absolutely. You need every. This is not just for the Indianapolis, right? It's every single race that you do, regardless if it is a lead, if it is an official race at iRacing, uh, like I covered the Cravenic uh, Adrian series uh, not long ago. But every race that you do, you need to have that fun mindset because you need to extract the fun the best way you can. Whether you're finding hard another driver on track the same class or you're overtaking slow cars in a multi-class race. And so every bit that you can extract and enjoy, it's already a very positive thing that you can put up in your checklist in terms of sim racing and racing in general as we see Brophy in the pit lane. Brophy. 25th position right now. Off the way, he made it 29 laps in his respective stint just now. It's been a rough sequence where he's been trying to get himself back in the going of things. As we look back at some of the our battles starting to form up on the racetrack. This is Adam Frazier that you're looking at right now. The center screen, Tony Shallon right behind. I mentioned Shallon gaming all those positions. But what about Frazier, who had not the best of qualifying days, to say the very least? He's looked much better and more comfortable in race trim today. It's one of those situations where, you know, sometimes you, not, you don't feel okay with the quality, with the quality set, or you, you make up a mistake in qualifying. And those drivers, they pretty much are more, more, much, much more experienced than me to know that the even though their qualifying was under underwhelming or, or underperforming, they know they have a shot at the race because, again, everybody has a shot here. So they just have to make their best to try to get within those positions. And Frazier coming from E24 so far, now P13, and trying to hunt down uh, Mike, Rasm uh, Mike Rasmus, but he's far away back, nearly a second away. That's the thing you really want to do, you know, just work yourself easily and have fun for Frazier by the way it's a plus 11 on the race indeed trying to get himself to the next grouping of cars that includes Mike Rasmus and Joe Branch Joe Branch is in 26 Rasmus still in the league lap in 12 spot on the track I think he's not the biggest gainer, though. Looking here, uh, the biggest gainer, I think it is Brian Beer, 19th position from P29 up to P10. Matt Taylor and Brian Beer, along with Tony Schauer, are all in that grouping of cars. Yep. Keep in mind, Taylor is in the grouping that features Ryan Otis, Jay Brandt, and himself at the moment, separated by about one second piece. Matt Taylor up 20, 21 spots in P9 now. Yeah, he's the biggest gainer, not not Brian Beer, but they're the two biggest gainers so far in the track of the biggest gainers on track. So good to see as you guys now see on the screen uh, who are the biggest gainers. Matt Taylor, 19 positions. Beard, 18 positions. And then you can see right at the middle of the pack, 20 shot, I think, with 15 positions up. Most spots lost so far are going to Jason Brophy with minus 21 on the race for those still active. Brian Carey, who started towards the front, involved in the lap one, turn one incident. Minus 27 is the most positions lost overall on the racetrack. Keep in mind with our pit stints, we're already approaching the window again in the next 10 to 15 laps for drivers to duck their way towards service for the third time or so under green flank conditions today. Yeah, looking here, Larkin might be the first guy who might come into the pit lane in, within that top five. He's all by himself. He's on 23 laps. If you're all by yourself, you're probably going to do 29 laps, maximum 28 if you're burning way too much fuel. As we're looking into Chin again coming into the pit lane for his scheduled service. Only 24 laps, and when you have the damage that you talked about, how much more does that burn the fuel? compared to before as he goes into his pit box. It, it burns considerably, I think. It isn't exponential, but you you probably burn up like 50% 
or 25% more per lap than what you normally build, uh, burn up. So he's in, in full length, your stint's going to be shorter than usual. That explains the 25% difference on that window before as also of note, Ron Hacker has elected to come in for his respective pit stop or service. Looking at Harrington, meanwhile, as he continues to work his way towards a big gaggle of traffic and a blocker trying to drive around some of that group of cars at the moment. Impressive day for Harrington. Remember on the GP layout for this track, Lorenzo, he ended up getting involved in trouble and that was major for the championship entering today. Yeah, getting in trouble with Mike Rasmus right on the on the exit of the backstretch and, and basically nullifying his whole race. He had to claw himself up. I think only got two spots at the end of the day, but the damage was done. That basically opened up a huge leeway to Adam Blocker uh, to open up on Harrington. But again, it's double points here, so depending on circumstances, that, that advantage can be nullified if Harrington actually gets the winner here and Blocker just decides to have an abysmal day at the remainder of the stint. I don't think he's going to decide to have that. It's going to come down to scenarios to pop up. You never know what can happen in Indianapolis. Yeah, we'll never know. It's, it's, it's one of those unpredictable races we've seen races being ended in the final lap, being races being ended with three to go, or races that were ended on strategy alone that you, oh, let's just try a different strategy over here. Let's go for something more aggressive in terms of fuel, trying to go for an overcut, but it's not working out. So it's those interesting scenarios that you try to find yourself, not only in sim racing, but racing in general. We even saw that in real life with some perspective at some points that uh, Indianapolis, in, in the most unpredictable moments, you can have like race defining moments that uh, can make or break someone's life in this in this track. It's so very critical to win at this racetrack. Everyone wants to do it because it can be something that can pop up during your career for a long, long time. As by the way, see on screen the battle for 11 position at Houston, Mike Rasmus. Down in 21 seconds behind, making a way around Chris Fowler there. That was used to pick to break up the battle. One of the drivers that we talked about in the rough circumstances was checking on in on Sage Carroll. We can because he is right now 22nd position now. He's been picking off lap cars one by one, passing by them before Blocker can lap them. Yeah, again, he's kind of like opening up the seas for Adam Blocker just to go through, right, and uh, helping Blocker in terms of maximizing the fuel efficiency. That's why Blocker went 33 laps on his stint prior to the pit lane and looked like it will be the same thing again for Blocker, but uh, the job that Karen has been doing as he ducks down into the pit lane for Graham Pit Stop, by the way, for Karen, that's 29 laps on the gallon on uh, the fuel for Karen, as that was a wild entry. One of the fans watching alone on the YouTube version of tonight's action is uh, described it as the longest cha-cha-cha dance in motorsports. And you can see why as Karam is into the box. Camp as well made it 30 laps on his respective stint. Elkin Tech Simulations NHR Esports Machine having a very solid day as Karam's off and away in front of him. I'm, surpri I'm surprised to see some of the cars. Oh, we have an incident on the front of the uh, up front straight on the exit of turn number four, near the golf blocker on the exit. And the caution is out for just the second time tonight. As now that changes everything, and that's going to be big because Karam is going to be a lap down as a result of that. Oh, that is unfortunate. And that was his teammate, by the way, Justin. Damon Martinez crashed out of four and uh, nearly got blocker because there was some uh, kinetic energy that pushed Martinez a little bit into the middle 
off the track, but Blocker managed to uh, dodge away pretty much skillfully and avoid also the breeze on track. Violent hit from Martinez puts us under yellow conditions. Let's take a look at what happened on the Rank Spot TV replay as man. That's a massive snap of oversteer coming off the corner. Yeah, that is massive. I really want to see if I actually clipped the curbing into the into the last turn, but uh, nevertheless, I think the way jacker uh, was way too much for that car to handle on the last turn. And once you lose, the, if you lose a little bit of the back, it's very hard for you to catch it under normal conditions. And now you're going to see very, very busy pit lane over here, Justin. This will equalize all the strategies on fuel with 105 laps to go. Should be worth noting that Larkamp did not lose a lap, I believe, in that sequence. No, yes, he in fact did. He's going to have to take the wave. Karam will also be in a situation where I think he can take one. As off in the way goes many of the drivers into the pit boxes. Richie Hearn, though will cycle to the race lead as a result of this caution flank. He's the one who ends up capitalizing on this as Blocker will be the first one off the lane. A look at Harrington over there. Now Harrington almost got raced off hard by Kinsella for the battle for second off the lane. The biggest gainer here might have been Jay Brand here. Um, Justin might have jumped Ryan Otis and Tyler Kraft on the pit lane. About two spots up for the number 15 car. But the focus goes to the driver who is yet to duck down for now, Richie Hearn. Keep in mind this quick yellow racetrack. So. He needed to be able to come down, or has to come down eventually, you'd have to think. He needs to come down, 29 laps for Richie. Sage Karam is scored in front of him, I believe, so there is a chance of the possible wave going for him to get him finally back in the lead lap. There is the chance to go for the lead lap, though, too, you have to think, Renzo. He's been running the back much of the race. Yeah, but looking at Richie over here, he's diving that inside line, so I wouldn't be surprised he comes out into the pit lane. And uh, what, he, what he wanted to do basically is, you know, try to go a lap extra. You know, maybe suck yourself back to the leaders of this race and be within a very contentious position of, you know, maybe having a lap extra in terms of fuel during the long run. Now in the lane, wave rounds coming around. Among them, we Sage Carum. Jason Brophy also cycles back to the lead lap, so 23 drivers are on the lead lap for this upcoming restart. Coming towards halfway, Adam Blocker, your race leader. Harrington, Kinsella, Bennett, Brent. The top five as Richie Hearn completes his service of 9.1 seconds. Score towards the back. It should be worth noting that one driver had a massive, massive technical issue during this caution flight period. Scott Holmes, he is still on the lead lap, however. Your thoughts on how this has played out so far, Renzo, for the first half as we're approaching halfway of this race? It's been a really interesting first half of the race so far, and uh, so far, really dominant lead from Adam Blocker. No, give me no chance whatsoever to Connor Harrington or anybody else to come closer to the leader of the leadership of this race. And um, some very, very interesting strategy battles and mind battles uh, within top five and top ten. I can't wait to see again what the second half of the race has in store for us. And again, remembering that you have to make it to 168 to be uh, 168, 169 to be very, very safe in terms of fuel. Can't wait to see as we go for the restart. Adam Blanco ready to go. 103 laps to go from Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the HyperX Indianapolis 500. And domination from the one machine all day today. He's off and away. Green flag is out. We're back to racing.
great start for Blocker as Harrington tries to utilize the second line. And now is in his best position possible to make it a back and forth for the race lead. Harrington down the back stretch with the run. He takes the lead for the first time today from Indy. So private label team height is now one at the top of the pylon. As Harrington leads his first lap around Lorenzo. Yeah, a perfect moment for Harrington to lead that lap. You know, the restart kind of brought back the status quo between all drivers within the pack. Now really looking forward to see if Adam Blocker is going to swap traps with Harrington or to have Kinsella, his teammate, sort coming into the back line, uh, the, the, the fuser out of that blue car, the number one car, and uh, allow Kinsella to become a factor for the lead battle. Walker trying to build up the run to build himself back towards the 44's rear end. And a lot of time down the front straightaway with 101 laps to go. Halfway this time by coming up to the strike. Stage Karen, by the way, is state stationary in 22nd of note. Jason Brophy stationary 23rd. Matt Taylor looking to gain the position in 7th and does. But Blocker is right back there to try and go for the swap draft. If he elects to choose so, at 100 laps to go at the flag stand. The line taken from a blocker apparently indicates that he's one to five for that P1 or share some draft. But uh, I can be, proved, be proven wrong quite a lot over here because blocker, if he wanted to go for the run on turn number one, he could have. Would have been a lie slightly aggressive, but uh, he is probably playing it safe with Conrad Harrington at this point in the race because they all want to take, I think, two more pit stops in terms of 30, 30 laps on the field and then uh, just scrap it up with the final positions in the final laps of the race. Reynolds is under attack from Brian Beard. Meanwhile, as Beard continues to charge his way to the pack, it's the biggest mover with the plus 21, but Brian Beard looking to match even with that, couldn't get the run he was looking for towards the inside. We'll have to reset. As up at the front, again, Blocker lifting and not taking the run. He's trying to get close to a Lorenzo, but I'm noticing he's lifting and coasting for for a couple of seconds on the entries. Yeah, you need a little bit of lift in terms of going to turn number one because you're carrying weight from what's good, but you need the lift regardless of what line you take. Because if you just go full flat, you're basically gonna take a little bit of a straw on the wall. Whether it's gonna be an inside or outside wall, it doesn't matter, but you need that lift. So not surprising to see Blocker, you know, just play conservative for now. And uh, if he finds the opening, he's going to be starting swapping draft. After all, fuel could be a very tight conversation point from this point forward, because depending on how the runs fare, it could get tight for the timing of some of the pit stops. You'd have to think, right, Lorenzo? I think so because right now we're they're all seven laps within the spin. If they go 27, it will be right about lap 123. If they go for 30, that's 153. They probably would do like two stops and a half. So they need to extend that over 30, 30 liters, maybe 31, 32. They go 64 on the next two in the next two stints. They could be safe. They could be coming up right around lap 170 for the five final pit stop. That might be what Blocker's thinking about here at the time being, keeping 41 fives at the moment at the head of the field are these drivers. And it's looking like at the very least, the rhythm continuing to stay afloat for these drivers coming up to 96 to go this time. Uh, the guys that uh, we thought would be contenders for this race, uh, like Sage Karam, all the way in the back, falling some positions all the way up into P21 at the moment. 
keeping nice and single follow towards the very back of the field just hasn't been able to make the moves that we were expecting the least attempt at the moment so at the moment continues to be connor harrington who leads for private label team hype just her second major leader of the race today and keep in mind with the left laps we talked about it before the majority of the laps was jonathan goke in this racetrack 243 entering today sage karam 63 Kinsella 79 in terms of active adam locker had just 59 active coming into today renzo and every lap this you can gain a club in top five of course goke was actually a really good driver within the 500 competed a whole lot of these 500 races excelled in some of them but uh, letting the new generation to come by and, uh, and take their chances. And good to see that the, the guys are taking advantage out of it, you know, trying to maximize their laps in this race and play some mind games again with some of the other drivers and see where they will go next. Who do you feel is someone to keep an eye on for the second half of the race as a result and who we haven't talked too much about? Of? Mm, good question. Um... I'll pick, I'm probably going to pick Tyler Graf over here because he's been quite quiet and, there's, and this race hasn't made any aggressive moves or trying to claw up some spots. He's basically been playing safe in the traffic so far. Just right right behind uh, Jay Brent for the top five position. If we get another yellow flag, I think we can see Graf starting to be a, a little bit more aggressive uh, towards about lap. 130, 140, as we were starting to see the weavy on the start finish line. The snake's coming, starting to come into form here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's take a step aside when we can as Connor Harrington leads over Adam Blocker, Andrew Kinsella, Henry Bennett, Shea Brand. Your top five. You're watching Race Spot TV and ESTV for coverage of the HyperX Indianapolis 500. Welcome back to Race Spot TV and ESTV's coverage of the HyperX Indianapolis 500 from iRacing's virtual Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Justin Prince, Lorenzo Bonner with Hugo with Hugo Wees in the producer seat for today's camp action. Cameras provided by Istvan Battle Loop, TrackCams22.com. Right now, it's Connor Harrington who leads. Adam Blocker has been continuing to ride in his draft in second position. And Lorenzo, that could be critical for the fuel marks here. It can. I'm just doing quick calculations over here because if they actually come to the pit lane, the 29 laps, uh, that will be right about lap 126, 127. And then if you go for the 29 laps once again, 
that is going to be right about lap 155 so you're probably gonna have to go for a final short stint in the final maybe 50 laps of the race and uh you're gonna have to basically kind of reset your whole race or hopefully i'll flag to come out and uh and be on the lead lap and that's going to be very critical later on in this race indeed big picture playing here is to the inside wall they go this time with the snake for a good portion of the straightaway keep in mind andrew can sell us staying within reach of these drivers as well as henry bennett and jay brand round at the top five brands into the wall brands into the inside fence he slides it up into the racetrack as the caution flag waves And a hard hit for Jay Brand, who pushed up into the outside wall, coming off a of turn two and ricocheted off the inside. Yeah, that's the traditional, you know, arrow wash uh, play over here. Unfortunate for Jay Brand that just got pushed off way outside of the lane, merging to the cars. That would have been his fault because that's kinetic force just playing its part over here. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised here, Justin. If that resets the status quo in terms of fuel and every enemy, literally everybody comes down to the pit lane. Wouldn't be surprised as well to see that as here's the replay. Well, hard contact and ricochets right into the path of oncoming traffic. Now, I just want to take a look over here and see who, who actually part of that traffic that uh, he was coming right behind him uh, because that is indeed a very, very hard crash. That is the first car was Tyler Graft. After that is Matt Taylor. And Matt was the first on scene. And Ryan Notice managed to narrowly avoid it. Becomes a two stopper from here, keep in mind. So it's going to get intriguing on how this all plays out for these pit stops in the pace and the speed as Harrington It's your race leader with this caution flag. Sage Karam with this caution also got up to 19th position after his technical issues at the starting grid for today as here we go blocker and Harrington playing games nearly into the attenuator trying to play the games <laughs> look at that pit lane here Justin I told you it's gonna be really busy so expect some movers and down up and downers up in this field Strategy is going to be essential. I can tell you with definite uh, words over here. They do not have feel for two stoppers. They're going to have to do a short stint with about 14, 13 to go. If they go all the green, green all the way. Very interesting indeed. If that indeed is the case for these competitors now. Ryan Otis, Samuel Ryman, Stephen Lurkamp all stayed out. Under this caution, Harrington was the first driver off the lane, followed by Blocker, Bennett, and Kinsella. Tower Graf rounding up the top five of the race off the lane. Interesting call from Otis. Those drivers have to come in the next 10 laps or so if they elect to stay out for good. Yeah, I think they're playing with the fuel strategy right here. So these three drivers, they're probably hoping that the, they come into the pit lane. That would be right about 70 to... 76 70 something like that to go and then hope that they can go green all the way and uh maybe catch yellow flag towards the latter portion where they they probably would have to come out for a short stint then again everybody did not cannot make with two gallons uh, not two stints of fuel all by themselves they can't In our words, the draft is going to be very vital. You're saying, Lorenzo? Yeah, vital. It's you need to you need you need to work with the draft in this first stint, maximize the fuel range, try to get to that 34, 33 stint uh, in terms of laps, and and then the second one. The second one is going to be trickier than the first one, in my opinion, because you probably want to have 34, 35, but the max range, and then uh, pray to pray to God that nothing happens in between that. So the dice have been rolled with the one to go signal. Three drivers are attempting to stay out here. Ryan Otis, Samuel Ryman, who at one point had a one minute and 11 second pit stop in this race. And Larkamp, 
who had to take a wave at one point after getting trapped the lap down. Remember, he was as high as the top five. That puts Harrington in the midst of traffic. And how big do you feel those older tires will be for the cars in front here? And how will that factor in for the traffic, in your opinion? It's going to be tricky for uh, for those guys to make the overtakes at, at first. They're going to need to build up at least a lap or two in terms of build up in the tire heat build up. Try to make the moves on our camp, Ryan, in the notice. But after that, it's all on patience. If they want to play it patiently, work the draft down to see how it's going to go. I probably would do that, just trying to play safely for now and then go for the moves whenever adequate. Because then again, these cars, they're going to have to build, going to have to be on the burnt up rubber. Arrow draft is not the easiest for you to make up over here. It's not the, you can get a good run, but it, the overtaking is kind of difficult. So can't wait to see what's going to happen. That, that shakes up things a little bit. It absolutely does. Some interesting wrinkles for this race. Now we're about to see how the wrinkles all unfold. And how these drivers look to smoothen out the respective strategies as this race goes on. Ryan Otis in control of the field. Pace car is off. Green flag waves were back on her way with a great launch from the 95. Oh, and they're side by side and running for third with Harrington getting to the outside of Lord Camp. What a jump. Timed it up near perfectly to be able to already make one pass. And now Adam Blocker is pinned right behind the 62. Kinsella has also lost a spot to Tyler Graf off the launch. Ryman going for the race lead. Harrington electing a fall in the line as Samuel Ryman is now in the lead for the first time today. Oh, Larkin got loose on three. That would allow Blocker into the outside line, going to P4. Well, Larkin's car getting a little bit wobbly in the between three and four. That they have to keep mind on that. Oh, in trouble for Sage Karam in turn four. He is slow with significant damage in the two machine. As they battle side by side for second position, Karam has made contact with Luis Gonzalez Nunez. We are not under caution, however, as Ryman continues to break up that draft and Harrington starting to show some flustering. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Karam. Two tires off. His suspension is broken. That's race done for Sage Karam. So all eyes will be on Blocker and Harrington and Kinsella. Especially on those that have a chance to do go for the two wins over here, over here and now you look at the replay what happened to Karim See contact with Nunez they bump and Karim straight to the safer barrier a Tough break for Karim who had a lot of optimism coming in today with a strong qualifying performance then started with the technical issues the second the grid started had to work his way back onto the lead lap, and now, day possibly done for Carroll. As Blocker has made his way around Ryan Otis, only Samuel Ryman remains of the drivers who are up at the very front, who stayed out. Ryman looking to break the draft, but Harrington with a massive run, four tenths the gap down to three. And let's see how Ashley is gonna be working out for Ryman over here, and if uh, Harrington and Blocker play aggressively, with the leader of this race and meanwhile the third of those cars who have actually pitted on the L5 which is Tyler Graft is actually catching Ryan Otis on the back stretch. What a gamble again for some of these drivers to stay out. Harrington trying to utilize the second line. Oh this is well there has been a pass between Kinsella and Graf for position back and forth. Graf able to defend them with a high line this time. Kinsella lines it back up astern. For the race lead though, Harrington to the point. Rips it away from Ryman. Now Ryman, all he has to do is try to ride the best he can, the wing out of that a private label team high car and maximize the fuel range. If you can get through lap 70 with 50, 73 remaining, I can see something very interesting brewing for that number 63, uh, 63 car. 
Yeah, this is going to be an intriguing call overall for Ryman. See how this plays out for him after running the back much of the day today in the 63. Now it's the question, though, of how Blocker tries to close up the gap now. Blocker seven tenths behind your race leader. They've been able to pull away by nearly two seconds from Ryan Otis and company. Oh, and Larkamp slow down the back straight away. He ended up going all the way to the apron, hitting some of the bumps in turn two and nearly heading to the inside wall. But what a save from Larkamp. Uh, avoided the wall on the outside. Car was light. He actually had to let off the gap, checked up the whole field, but uh, managed to keep it clean on the track. I told you that car was wobbly, wobbly on, on the restart. Well, it definitely wobbled its way nearly to the inside wall in his regard. Larkamp now back to 13th because of this wobble. Whoa. Good car control to avoid that safer barrier, though. Save of the day so far. Karim is back on the racetrack, by the way, after three minutes and 12 seconds of damage repairs. So he is back rolling in his number two machine as Herr Adam Blocker makes the move on Ryman, gets the space, and now move Adam Blocker to second. Race lead separated by four tenths once more as a result. They drive with the wind going right behind them and to their left. And the two stoppers, they basically are correct myself. The two stoppers, I think that might be a po that will be a possibility. That is the, the good possibility. If you work yourself well on the field, I have to go for the final two, three laps stint uh, refueling. But now you can see the middle of the pack getting a little bit closer and then driving having some uh, connection issues as now Blocker will go to the lead here, Justin. Adam Blocker back to the point with a massive run down the front straightaway. Had speeds of more than 227 miles an hour heading off into the corner. Now Blocker looks to try and hold on or will they go for the swap draft? Yes, they will. Harrington with the swap. Now they look to break away. They have a buffer of more than two seconds from the rest of the drivers on their strategy. And basically the two guys are on the us strategy, kind of breaking off the pack a little bit, you know. And that's the thing I think Blocker and Harrington, as you can see, the swap of the, the, the lead of once again, uh, want to have, you know, just instead of three, four, five, six cars battling for the lead, you want to have as little as many cars you want to get. Two, three, that's the perfect number you want to have for battling to the lead. Absolutely. No swap this time as Harrington shuffles the gears into the corner entry. Coming up to 74 laps to go. This time by Karim is officially out of the race. He joins Brandt, Martinez, Corhua, Kerry, Ken Hacker, Christopher, Mike Regney as Harrington back to the point. And I'll tell you one thing here, Justin, even though we're watching these two, if I'm Tyler Graft, I will try to hold nothing back whatsoever. Do not hold field. Go map one. Chase Ryan Otis. Go for that overtake and then stay behind Wyman because every lap that you lose the gap in the green flag to the leaders is the one lap you really will be beating yourself up. That, oh, I wish I had that gap towards the final laps of the race that I probably could have contended for the win. Harrington leads the lap. Locker gets the swap. Once again, Adam Locker to the race lead. Who will lead going into turn three is the big question. Meanwhile, you mentioned Richie Hearn. He just got taken three wide by Jason Brophy and Scott Holmes just a moment ago. They nearly wrecked it coming into turn one. It should be worth noting they're back single file now, but it was a sketchy moment for Richie Hearn, who was shuffled by two different cars. 
I got shoveled by two different cars and the biggest problem is that uh, Ricky actually scrapped the wall on the outside of turn number two as we're seeing the switch of the leads once again between Harrington and Blocker. I don't know if Hearn has damage on that on that car to that affects the engine in the top speed but so far keeping within the draft out of Brophy and Scott Holmes. And again, this is the efficient way of doing it if you're the race leaders to gain time and pull off and away. And you battle back and forth, back and forth like a pendulum swing. Larkamp has indicated he's coming in this time by as well, by the way, in the 62 machine. So the window is now open for the drivers who stayed out under the last caution. Ryman, Otis, and Larkamp are now in their window while Blocker is back up front. Larkamp is now into the lane for his scheduled service in the Elkin Tech Simulations NHR Esports machine. To pass by the Pagola and in for his stop. Ryman is also indicated this time by he'll come in from the third position. I wouldn't be surprised if Otis comes into the pit lane as well. I wouldn't be surprised either. Well, he follows suit. Ryan Otis does not as the top two now have a massive buffer of 2.8 seconds between them and Tower Graf. As they swap for the lead, Tara Graf ended up swapping for third position as Ryan Otis let him go. And yeah, now if you're Tyler Graf, what do you do, right? Watch yourself some contact to the leaders. You're probably gonna have to hope for a yellow flag to you know get closer to the leaders, bring up the status quo once again between all the drivers within the pack, lead pack, and then uh, see if you actually have a shot to contend for the leader on uh, leadership of this race. Up 10 positions was a contender in the Retro Series race we talked about. As Ryan Otis will come down for his service this time by. You see him now down to the lane in the Synergy Motorsports Silver Car. So now, that brings everyone to the halfway point of their respective stint at the moment. And as a result of that buffer traffic, it's now 3.1 seconds between Harrington, Blocker, and Graf. Here comes Blocker for the swap once again. Up to the point. The dominant driver now leads once more. And for Adam Blocker, keep in mind, he's your points leader as talked about with three victories on the season, eight top fives and eight top tens and three poles. Entering today's event, it's been a dominating one. Should I check myself four poles with this race today? He has been a man on a mission looking at his name to the record books, Lorenzo. Yeah, not only that, but he's also a back-to-back -back winner here this season. Can we see a triple... Uh, like a triple back to back to back winner this season he's, he's in a good position so far and nobody has actually accomplished that in this season so far and i think we haven't i, I hope to be corrected but uh it's, it's been rare to see this in light hard racing series a back to back to back winner absolutely it's an interesting question to see if Blocker can pull that off, or if Harrington can pull off, would be one of the biggest wins of his career. Don't forget, Blocker is looking for his second win in this race in his career as well. And the only driver who actually has a chance with the injured kids not to win this two times, the only one being, the only driver who won two times being Jonathan Goak. Absolutely. Keep in mind, Adam Blocker several times has won back-to-back -back over the past few years. But it's just a matter of can he get three race wins on the trot? Looking back at some of the air battles, by the way, Richie Hearn 
His battle has settled on down to, with him in 14th. He was as far back as the 20s for much of this race. He started 32nd, Lorenzo. Yeah, what a performance from Richie you've heard so far. Despite some connection issues, he's having a really good solid run so far, but uh, still keeping on track and uh, having a solid result so far. Indeed. And solid for him as there's, these two pull away, Renzo. Yeah, if there's one driver I really want to mention uh, that had been quiet after his first uh, the pit stop fumble has been Jason Brophy here. Uh, Dustin going all bump up all the way back to P25, P26. I think he was even a lap down uh, at some point calling himself up back to P12. It's a little bit far from Tony Schauen and Adam Frazier, but he still has room to make up and get within top 10. Of course, not the result he wanted. He started P3, but so far, really good recovery race from uh, the private label team hype driver. Very solid indeed from Brophy after his incident down the pit lane. By the way, to answer your question for those who may have been asking about how many times has a driver won three in a row, how about Blocker himself back in season seven? Only time it's been done. Bell Isle, Bell Isle, Motegi back that season. Impressive. Impressive indeed. From an impressive driver who is still in second. Looking through as some of the air drivers continue to shuffle themselves about an air good driver. Strong performance. Brian Greenlee, we haven't talked too much about. He's up to 17th as well. A plus 18 on the race for him. And the thumbs up cancer down LPM machine. And I see uh, Greenlee having a really good result. Be the last place car on track here. So seeing him calling himself up, he's uh, about six tenths of a second behind Luca, uh, Luis Gonzalez Nunez. So uh, he has some shots to claw up a few more spots in the feud, but then it's a little bit of a work to try to reach the next driver, which would be uh, Richie Hearn and that three car pack he's actually in right now. He is closing in some time right now to Luis Gonzalez Nunez, in fact, as Nunez Trying to break a bit of draft, trying to catch up to Aaron Morgan. Luis Gonzalez Nunez with a lot of fanfare, but he hasn't had the luck this season. Luis Gonzalez Nunez, in a lot of cases in Linehart competition, has shown great speed, but hasn't had the luck. Now he shows the speed to get himself up to 15th. I finally got through. Aaron Morgan right there and unfortunate for New Year's because he was the driver that got involved with uh, Dave Karam on the restart of this race that didn't trigger the yellow flag he got some contact on the left hand side pod for New Year's but still managed to keep that on track fortunately indeed Richie Hearn, by the way, trying to shuffle around with Scott Holmes still. Scott Holmes for Sector 5 continues to have a very solid day. Man, a really good solid run from Scott Holmes by the three wide uh, that was mentioned. Uh, you know, going three wide at Indianapolis is not the of course, real life, it's not unusual as we're seeing some drivers coming into the pit lane. Just taking a look whose drivers are there. I think that is Tony Schauer coming into the pit lane and Matt Taylor coming into for their second to last service. 59 laps on the, to go. 20, 30, 29, they're pretty much safe towards the end of the race. They made it 27 laps on their respective stints. See how it works out for them as they're already off and away with Taylor with the longer stop 8.9 compared to Shawin's 8.5. But back towards this battle involving 
Richie Hearn, of course, he has real-world experience for Renzo here at Indianapolis. Had some strong runs in the real-world Indianapolis 500 in the 1990s in particular. True. Very good, some really good runs from Richie Hearn, of course. Now just sitting back and being on the simulator, but still that real-life experience. We talk about Sage Karam, you know, having that experience coming all the, from coming P7 in the last running here in 2021. So uh, every experience that you have in the real life on a track that uh, you drove before is something that you can actually walk on beforehand to, to a race like this. Indeed. He's Andrew selling the pit lane. Yeah. Yes, indeed. He's in for his service. Lights up the tires a little bit, trying to get it back up to speed towards the pit speed. As now, it's a critical time for the rest of the field. He is the first of the main leaders to come in for their respective service. Eight point nine seconds into the pit lane, Ron Hacker has indicated he's coming in this time as well. All of this is while the race lead had settled on down for a while so those drivers for the time being stopped swapping lorenzo similar to the last run where they calmed down and went back single file like this yeah now it's all mind games as kinsella will come back a lot back but the, he will be within the reaching draft out of the leaders meanwhile bennett comes into the pit lane will do his service connor harrington signified he's coming also for the pit lane as well so the leader of this race will do his pit service right now Henry Bennett off and away as Harrington had to enter the pit lane with a car in front in Ricky Harden. How much does it impact you having a lap down car in front of you for the pit stop? It does quite a lot because you don't know where he's going to break and where he's going to slam the brakes to try to get within the, the pit speed limiter, right? So it's a little bit of unpredictable, but I think the time damage has been very minimal to Connor Harrington. see how it fares out overall harrington 9.9 .9 seconds in the pit box that respective service adam blocker continuing to stretch it forward and now adam blocker ends the stretching with a pit stop i honestly thought that blocker is actually going to overshoot the pit lane's pit, uh, pit, uh, entry limiter <laughs> he ended up making it at the speed limit it looked like at the cone very tight when it came to that sequence as now he rolls towards his pit box for the second to last time in this race. Tyler and Graff, this, Adam Frazier, Scott Holmes also in Renzo. Yeah, everybody's gonna come in for the pit lane. Now, you know what the strategy is now, uh, Justin? There is just one. Map hey. one, full send every single lap. Yes, indeed. And the question is, where will the full send cycle Harrington? Well, it will cycle him just in front of Blocker, all while Beard, and several more come on in. And uh, just to let you know really quickly about Blocker uh, losing, not losing the spot to Harrington, but uh, the, the rejoin for Blocker had a little bit of a tense moment because he nearly clapped the grass on the second, like on the second, on the last split second before rejoining the track safely but it was a good rejoin but nearly clipped the grass and that could have been disastrous for the number one car yeah that could have been massively disastrous for a dominant driver in this race is more service coming on in matt houston mike rasmus coming in for their respective stops richie hearn also coming in Ryan Greenlee able to extend it one more lap. Be among the last of the leaders who have to take service. And here's the interesting wrinkle as these cars come in to think about too is, don't forget about Samuel Ryman. He is currently net P3 on the racetrack as a result of his strategy call. Yeah, but he's right about 11 laps minimal before coming into the pit lane. What he has to do right now is try to get closer to Adam Blocker 
and try to use the job so he can save a little bit of fuel because if he pits with let's just say in 11 laps that would be right about 41 to go you would have you would you would basically go for 29 laps and pit with seven to go and it would have required a yellow flag to try to save your own race Ringley in for his service. Swap draft engaged for the race lead at the stripe. Adam Blocker gets the lead lap by four one thousandths of a second. Let's get back to Ryman. He is 1.5 seconds behind all of this still. That's going to be the tough part on his respective strategy. Now coming to 20 laps on his stint this time by. Swapping once again, Harrington for the race lead, takes it away. And looking here, Graf had really, really underwhelming pit stop. We saw him being P3 in our standings, right, Justin? Shuffled back all the way down to P10, P9 at the moment, the graphics LPM driver. Indeed. Yeah, Graf again had a 10.3 compared to the nine second stops. Spitters have 40 seconds in the box for Graf. So that's a sign that Graf made a mistake on his pit stop sequence. A yeah, very, very unfortunate. Ron Hacker has now had to come down to the lane hearing he may have had trouble with Brian Greenlee. That sent him immediately on a tow truck. Yeah, you can see, you just saw Greenlee all the way down to the back of the frame where uh, Blocker is now leading the lap once again. Greenlee's tire is very, very wobbly on the right-hand side front, so he's going to have to come down to the pit lane and uh, go for an extended service here. Unfortunate for, for the number 38 car. Unfortunate indeed. No caution for that situation just described, by the way. It was down the back straightaway. Here is that situation where Greenlee comes out. Greenlee comes up. Oh. And forgets there's a car there. Or at least doesn't know it. I think his spotter didn't clear him uh, of, of a car on the right hand side. Even Brian Greenlee apologized effusively to Ron Hacker. And he understood that the, it was the spotter who didn't let him know. It was uh, he had a car rejoining or it was car side by side really unfortunate indeed one thing to know there is still a tie for second most positions gained between Taylor and Beer who are sixth and seventh respectively there were also battles such as this one Tony Shawin is up 24 spots in this race with Jason Brophy providing pressure. And because we know Brophy wants to climb as many as he wants to climb because if you like to look on the team perspective battle right now, Adrenaline Motorsports Ride might come away with the lead over here, Justin. You never know when it comes to this type of race, this could be the turning point for that organization to take away that lead with some of the trouble for Joshua Chin. But it's been a great recovery from Brophy. I don't think either of us were sure how Brophy would respond after losing so much time in the pit lane, but it seems he's responded well and took it in stride to be able to recover to get to this point with 46 to go coming this time. Yeah, we're now impressive. under 46. Yeah, we're under 46, but it was it is impressive nevertheless what Brophy is doing because with an incident like that on the pit lane, that, that surely takes a little bit of your confidence because you, the one thing you really don't want to do is fumble in the pit lane, have a front wing damage, have to repair that front wing damage, get bumped all the way back and have to call yourself all the way uh, back up again. And what Brophy is doing has been nothing short and amazing as now he goes for the move on uh, Tony Shawin. Into turn three, Brophy right against the white line. Shawin trying to utilize the third line. Brophy, though, not able to get the pull as the better launch coming off the corner for Shawin. And will hold on to the spot at the start and finish line. And Brophy's car got really loose in between three and four, and uh, that's why uh, he didn't seal the move on the inside, but that outside line proving to be stronger than the inside line for overtakes here, Justin. 
We saw that time and time again that uh, those the diamonds on the inside, they needed some clearance for the other jars to let them go through. And Tony did not want to let by the private label team hype machine. Bit of traffic is up the road from by the way. They are reeling in Tyra Graf. They also have Ricky Harden, who they may be able to utilize for this battle as a pick. As now they make their way through the corner once more. Brophy not able to close up compared to where he was before, it seems. Struggling a little bit to close the gap. Mike Rasmus, in fact, keeping within arm's distance now. With the car in front. Three tenths lost last time for Brophy with his attempt to pass. I think he overshot his tires a little bit on the end of turn number three and four. And he has to calm down the tires a little bit more and more. But uh, now you can see Harden being ineffective on the outside line. Blocks off. Sean and will bring Brophy into the conversation. What a massive check there caused. And just as we expected, lap traffic was expected to play a factor in this fight. Brophy takes advantage. And Brophy moves back to ninth position. I don't think that's how he scripted it, though, obviously. Tony Shawin might not be happy after that one. But then again, what can he do? It's traffic. Where do you, where do you want him to go? I, I, I can feel nothing, but... I don't want to feel pity for Ricky Harden, but it, it, it's a tough situation to be the back marker and having guys battling for positions so close to you and you basically don't know what to do. Basically, have to shrug it off and try to do your best to keep yourself away from those guys. Ricky Harden, the last car running on track, by the way. Five laps down in 24th. 25th on down on your pylon are out of the race. It's a result of incidents. We might see Ryman coming into pit lane over here, Justin, as we're still looking into Justin Weaver having a good recovery race so far as well. Keep in mind, Samuel Ryman needs to extend it somehow by another six more laps. That's easier said than done as we see Justin Weaver working behind Joshua Chin on track. He's your sim experienced driver profile for today as, my goodness, in front of him, Joshua Chin into the inside grass. Joshua Chin able to keep it off the wall. We stay green. Apologies there as that was a scary moment for your sim experienced driver profile competitor. Wow. Take a look at what happened. Wow, against the outside wall, avoids the inside wall. He touches that inside. He might have ricocheted up the track. Yeah, because you can see the suspension is pretty much broken for, for Chin, but uh, what caused him, uh, what was his undoing was basically clipping that inside of the curb being off turn number three, offset the car into turn number three on the outside, clip the wall, and uh, good car control from Chin, however, to keep that car from rejoining the track as uh, we have about less than 40 to go. We'll be less than 39 to go as they're right about to start finish line. Ryman and Larkamp are already completed their service. So Psycho, Bennett and Kinsella upwards a little bit more. Larkamp had to come down additional time, believe though. So he may have had a problem in his service. 10 seconds off and away. So Larkamp has lost some additional time on the track in a lap. Yeah, I had to reverse the car, Larkamp, on the entry of his pit stall and thus effectively losing about two seconds on his pit total. So that's unfortunate for Larkamp. Unfortunate indeed and loses him the lap is off the way he would. Brian Beard, meanwhile, the man on a mission is in sixth and he is your fastest car on the racetrack at the moment he is trying to close up as much time as he can what a drive for brian beard what a drive coming from p29 all the way up to p26 
he's one of the two biggest gainers on the track the other one being matt taylor they're pretty much equal in terms of you know gaining spots on the track i think they found the the, the right recipe on how to gain positions on the track even though matt taylor has about six laps of uh, his advantage in terms of feel but he might be safe nevertheless whenever he comes out to pit lane with about 30 to go Indeed, right now, in a good spot. Just one top five, two top tens for Beard entering today, by the way, in seven starts this season. Known for his abilities in multiple different types of cars. And the versatility and adaptability are two major things, Renzo, that have been critical in his career. And you know, be able to adapt to any conclusion that it is thrown against you if you're thrown all the way back, thrown all the way front, has been really good so far. And uh, and some impressive results so far from Brian Beer. Let's remember, he actually got a top five at the road course in the, in the Indy GP. He started six, so he's a very good driver, regardless of what kind of track you are, long long speedway, short speedways, and the, and the road courses. He Excel depending on the circumstances as well. Ryan Oates of note has come into the pit lane. He lost a lot of time on this respective stint. Was 25 seconds behind the race leader before he had ducked down to the 95. And another one overshoots the lollipop man. More time lost for Otis, an hour one to two seconds in the pit stop sequence as he's off and away. I think total time will be right about 36 seconds for at 30, 37 rounded for Ryan Otis as he comes out of the pit lane. Indeed. We are inside the fuel save number to get to the end, but we aren't expecting the drivers to pit for another 10 laps here, Lorenzo. It's gonna be very critical for drivers to know how much fuel they need to put in exactly without underfueling the car to the point where they're waiting on the tires or overfueling the car to the point where they're waiting for the fuel. And I think right now we're at the point of the race that uh, they're pretty much comfortable. If they have like fuel calculators and things like that, they've pretty much been running on map one the entirety of the stint. So the map one cal with map one calculators, it will tell you, oh, you might have to fuel about 15, I was going to say 15 to 14 gallons or, or 16 gallons. You might have to fuel over here for, for, for you to make it to the end. So it's those small things. I think the key strategy here is how you come into the pit lane and how aggressively you come out of pit lane and re then rejoin the track because pretty much the, the the pitting part is pretty much equal for everybody. By the way, let's get the opportunity to look through those statistics of Justin Weaver that we were looking through before, shall we? Because, mm -hmm. because remember, Weaver is your driver profile for today. 73 starts. 35 top 10s, 14 top 5s, one victory that came at Texas back in Season 6. As well, his first start came at Atlanta back in Season 5. An impressive drive for Weaver. He's still in the lead lap. Up 18 spots in this race here today at Indianapolis, Lorenzo. And I think he's probably match, trying to match the best result he has this season so far. Uh, we know Weaver only raced three weeks in... in in the Lionheart Indy Car Series, and uh, he's far way down into the points, the point standing. So seeing him probably having one of his best results this season is really good for him. We'll give him a performance boost. It's so very critical to try and keep the performances up. As now, looking towards the back straightaway, Luis Gonzalez Nunez trying to get around a cluster of traffic. do so richie hearn was among the drivers he had to have go on by that was Larkamp they were making moves on who was only going 190 something on miles an hour because he had just had to come down to the lane again for extended service oh, no. 
That's really unfortunate for Larkin, but he can see the... It looks like the wheel is kind of like offset over here. Let's just try to look on the straight line. Yeah, that wheel is still offset. There might be some slight suspension damage over here, Justin, but uh, the car is still drivable somewhat, but it's not going to be fully efficient on speed. Can tell you the issue happened lap 164, turn three, in the short shoot, where he hit the wall. First time we've seen someone hit the wall on that part of the racetrack, as Matt Houston has ducked into the pit lane, 22 laps, just 22 on this stint. Matt Taylor's indicating he wants to come in as well, so the window is open. Another one show shooting the lollipop. And that's in reference to, for the drivers on their side, they have a lollipop man essentially telling them, stop right here. And you overrun that lollipop man, well, you end up having to back off and try and get behind said person as Taylor is in. And so everybody will go basically for the full stint, you know, don't want to conserve fuel anymore. So 29 laps is where you want to go. And another driver <laughs> overshooting the lollipop. And you guys don't see the lollipop man over here. As Justin said, you're going to see on the client side. But the one thing you really don't want to get it wrong is the lollipop and the positioning of your car towards the uh, tire uh, mechanics. Now down to 29 laps to go. Check that 28 laps to go in this race. Now it becomes the question, when do Blocker, Harrington, Bennett, Kinsella come in and how much fuel do you put in to be precise? Brian Beard in, made it 25 laps on his stint. Yeah, so basically right now, for Beard and everybody else pitting right now, is a full stint, basically seven liters or that's right about 18 gallons, 18, 17 gallons, 18 gallons of fuel, if I recall that correctly. My mathematics is wrong on the gallon side. But it is a full fuel for, for the majority of them. The other guys might go up about three quarters of a full stint, maybe four fifths of a full stint in terms of fuel. Which can save you about a couple seconds in the pit lane, hence the importance of it. It's Richie Hearn we follow along with now. The Elite West Motorsports Machine. Looking very well in this race. Adam Frazier in front of them, elected to come down this time. Henry Bennett has also indicated he'll join Frazier this time. Now 29 laps for Henry Bennett, so he's coming. Harrington will have to come on the next lap. Blocker has two. Actually, there's another lap to go if he decides to go for 29 laps. But the problem for Blocker is there is traffic right in front of him. So do you try and pit before you reach the traffic then, Lorenzo? Or do you try Absolutely. and stick it out? So you go, think so? Go for pits. Go for pits. It would only be 29 laps into a stint. They need 25 laps on the fuel. The next driver in front of him is Joe Branch. Back to go up to the second and third line. In fact, this time, does he take the left turn? No, he doesn't. He doesn't take that advice, Renzo. He's going right into the thick of things. That's why he's a pro. I'm actually the club over here just commenting for you guys as uh, Harrington stays out for one more lap. Andrew Kinsella, though, came in. He made it 32 laps on his stint. That may be the magic number they're looking for. 32 laps to close things out. Harrington has lost time in the traffic. 1.3 seconds, by the way, on the racetrack as Kinsella makes his way to the box. Now, let's see if Connor here is actually going to make himself up to the box to go through turn number four blocker. Would now come this time by. I don't believe for a second that Harrington will hold back. And Harrington's coming in with him. That was really close for Harrington because he came a little bit uh, over speed into the entry of the pit lane, but it managed to slow the car down just in time to avoid a penalty. Here we go. Most valuable pit stop of the race. Blocker onto his marks. Harrington already trying to get moving from the Jacks. Harrington 9.1, Blocker 8.5. So a quicker stop for Blocker, 
The tough part's gonna be Lionel Kalisto is in front of Locker. You can see the distance growing as they make their way down the access road. 2.1 seconds and that might increase a little bit because the thing is now Kalisto is on the exit of the track. Now Blocker can build up the speed because he has a car to build up that speed right. The thing Connor has no one to work with in terms of draft as he they go into turn number three and four. Tower Graph has come in for his final stop as well this time by. So he is now in for service. Mike Rasmus, Richie Hearn are the only drivers in front of the leader who have yet to pit. Samuel Ryman is 17 laps into a stint. Justin Weaver is yet to pit as well. As Locker looking to try and join a small club that will form between him and Jonathan Goke if he can hold on for 24 more laps coming through 23. Last thing that Blocker wins is the yellow fly. Absolutely. Samuel Ryman has fallen behind Henry Bennett, by the way. That's where he is on track. That is seven seconds behind your current race leader, who has now got a gap of more than two seconds and growing. Next car in front, Ricky Harden. Then it's a clean track for your race leader, or your net race leader, I should say. It's just insane how Blocker managed to build up that gap prior to the pit lane. I think clearing himself up the traffic was he having Kinsella and the other car, you know, just sticking right in between them and giving that arrow wash dirty air into three and four. That might have made the race to the adrenaline power slide driver. Only two times has the interval been three seconds or more in this event. Season one, split two with Brad Eisenberg. Then back in season four, Jonathan Goke's second, or rather first, time winning the HyperX Indianapolis 500. Look at this battle started for him up though. Graf right in the thick of things with Matt Taylor, Brian Beer, Jason Brophy, all fighting hard for position in a top six position. And Brophy's looking like crazy for a position and it nearly went three wide into turn number three. Graf is the first one through the cluster. Jason Brophy able to pass by Brian Beard on the outside as well. This is now officially 4P6 as the last of the drivers have all pit. Now it's the matter of can Samuel Ryman get the caught she's looking for to hold on to the top four while the dive goes on for Taylor. Let's see, Brophy actually is going to try to follow through. There, there's a little bit of leeway between both cars. They're going to go side by side, and the only benefit in terms of this will be Brophy because we'll get closer in to turn number three. Small space given between these drivers, at least a car length and a half. Graf, though, on the high line, able to get the pole over Taylor. Comes Brophy. Brophy trying to line it up. Taylor trying to line it up even more so, though. Taylor with a bit of arrow wash and tightness forced up the track. He switches to the top as Brophy goes bottom. And there is Larkin right in front of Boa, right in front of Graf, which might play out a little bit in terms of traffic. Let's see how Graf is going to be able to clear away from Larkin as they go into three and four. Larkin moves to the high side. Graf able to clear by easily. Taylor picks up some draft from him down the straightaway. Brophy will also pick up draft from the both of them. Brian Beer losing touch, though, to these cars. On the older tires, Graf has the freshest tires in this group. Matt Taylor, six lap older rubber. Brophy has five lap pressure rubber than Taylor. It does, and it doesn't look like much, even though it is in terms of lap bus, but five laps in terms of tires in a track like this is a little bit, it plays a little bit of an advantage for the cars that have, uh, you know, the better rubber because you put so much stress on that front right 
and maybe on the back ride as well depending on the custom setup that we're actually running that uh, might give the advantage you know towards the cars that have the fresher over to actually have a little bit of an overlap on the other cars oh that's so very vital Andrew Kinsella, by the way, you see in the pylon, has passed Samuel Ryman as well for fourth position. Brophy, though, utilizing the sixth gear down the straightaway. Down to the final 16 laps of this race. Boy, what a HyperX Indianapolis 500 it has been. A race where we've seen domination from Adam Block for much of the day. Jason Brophy looking to try and move himself up forward though. Diving to the inside, loses more time and yeah. has to reset. Remember when I was talking about being the third car back to try to make the moves and uh, having the effect of the arrow wash being played out in full effect trying to make the overtake. Here, mm -hmm. there, there we are. It's gonna be complicated for Brophy to make that move. He needs to do it actually on the straight and clear himself off and hope that the driver that is actually leading that pack, if it's the car, third car back, is not on his line during the corner entry. All of it's so very difficult. What do you do to try and overcome that, Lorenzo, then, if you're that third car in the line, in the line as Brophy nearly scraped the wall? Just, just do the same thing. You know, full 100% pressure, and let's see if you actually get a really good run and the arrow wash doesn't play in full effect and even though they're gonna leave they're gonna complete the snake a little bit sometimes you can actually be get, be get yourself benefited from them let's see if it works out for Brophy of note Harrington has passed some of the lappers and now it's a battle for a top five because Samuel Ryman could only make it 26 laps Lorenzo he has to pit around that mark he projected, 14 to go. Yeah, I'm fortunate for Ryman, but uh, if we have a yellow flag, this brings out a little bit of a different, very, very similar situation what we saw in like real life races where uh, those guys who pitted late actually can make up the ground on the restart. Let's see, now Brophy goes on the inside. Brophy looking to rip away the spot now from Taylor. Taylor, though, all the way to the high line in the clean air once more. Final 13 laps now as Brophy again can't clear. And all of this is allowing Mike Rasmus right into the mix of things. Tony Shawin also closing on in near contact into turn one as Brophy washes up. I think for Brophy, he needs that outside line because the inside line is not proving to be effective for overtakes. He can still stay side by side. So you might have to duck and weave and go for it, you know, like a boxer would try to duck and weave and go for a jab or an uppercut or something like that and try to catch him off bar and go for the upper lane. Now, losing some ground again though in the corner. Final 12 laps. Of note, Harrington has gone through all the traffic. It's still a two second gap though between Blocker and Harrington. Harrington needs a yellow flag, otherwise it's, it's nearly impossible to reach with 12 to go. I think a lot of these drivers will like that right now, Lorenzo, at this point, but you it's never know. Blocker. Yes, indeed. Everybody except Blocker would like that yellow flag very much. <laughs> Don't want to jinx it. But he'll come up to 10 to go this time by. What a day it's been for Adam Blocker. A very dominant performance. Led a majority of the laps so far. And now looks to close it out. 10 to go at the stripe in the HyperX Indianapolis 500. It is basically going to be doing something that hasn't happened since our first running of the Indianapolis 500 at the Lionheart Indy Car Series. Joining Rick Music for winning from the pulsing position. Uh, despite the gap being a whole way much than what Rick actually won, when he won the first outing of the 500. Now, 
as this is all going on beard and rasmus there's now fighting for position this is eight spot on the track looking to peek up to the third line is rasmus but not able to build up the run they've lost touch to brophy taylor and grab with in the past couple laps or so Mike doing whatever he can right now, Renzo, just trying to get himself to the second line to try and get the cleaner air. Yeah, but I think there is a little bit of draft that is still working for Brian Beard a little bit. It's minimal, but that's why Ashley is allowing him to retain that P8 position so far and not allowing Rasmus to get those lines he wanted. If I'm Rasmus, I try to go for the higher line out of turn number one and two and try to try to jump as best as you can for go through the attack all this for valuable points for this race Tony Shallot also within range of these drivers by 1.1 seconds if things were to start heating up amongst these competitors Overall, though, what a race it's been, Renzo. From start to finish, just three caution flags on the day. And just three caution flags on the day. Really clean race so far. We're actually going to beat the, by a long shot so far, the fewest cautions we ever had on the 500. The fewest cautions were seven. We're going to only have three. And this is really good. Everybody just, you know, train, prepare themselves very well for this 500 with the Adam Walker winning from the pole to sneak position, but everybody who's finished this race, wall job so far. What a job in this race as we look now at Bennett and Kinsella. They're looking to fight for the final step on the podium. Kinsella nearly washed up towards the wall that time though. It takes some effort to get to the back end now of Bennett. Now, there's a really good question, which I'm, I'm frowning my head over here, Justin. If, 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 you're, if you're the Adrenaline Motorsports Red crew chief or the boss right now, would you let Kinsella and Bennett to go all out, fight for the podium spot, and risk a possible crash that uh, would take away leading points uh, from the team standings? Because so far, Judging by drivers, they have the better advantage in terms of the private label team height because Connor is in P2. The problem is Brophy is in P7, and he might actually lose position if he over drives the car too much to Brian Beer or Mike Rasmus and Tony Shawan, maybe. That is a good question. If they want to fight it out or take the points, they are on the same team, remember. So it still be the same points differential for the team itself. But look at this, Kinsella with a big run down the front stretch, now within a car length. Now under five laps to go from the Brickyard. They have a large string of traffic up the road. Keep in mind, they have Larkamp, Weaver, and a couple others who are within a range to potentially be factors here in this group. And the one thing you really don't want is overdrive the car with four, about four to go right now on the track. And if we get one more lap on the green and then we have a yellow flag, Justin, it's all over. We finish every yellow. Approaching the point of no return as it's called, as it can sell up, forced up high to get around the traffic. Lost him a lot of time, and that may be the one shot out the window there, Lorenzo. Yeah, really unfortunate. That was Laura Kemp, who's going really, really slow at the entry of turn number one and two. I don't know if he was actually letting the cars go by, but uh, yeah, he actually let them go by on the outside line, didn't want to force way too much. Three to go at the strike. Ryan Otis has completed his final splash of the race. Battling Beard. continue between Beard and Brophy. Yeah, I was going to say Beard up one spot here. It's going to be interesting to see what Brophy now does. Brophy wants this spot back. This is for seventh. Brophy to the inside, shuffling through the gears. Sliding on up, near contact. 
Brophy clears on by to get himself back up in the P7. Here, though, with the switch back, goes for the run back to the inside. Look at Rasmus. Rasmus indeed with the big run. Trying to rip it away from Brophy now, couldn't do so. Two laps to go from Indianapolis. Rasmus now with the opportunity to try and pass Brophy. He'll try it. Brophy though with the better run on the high line. Able to hold on for now. This is all while Adam Blanker is coming down the front straightaway. As they weave for the battle for position, the white flag waves. Final lap is underway from the brickyard. If I'm Mike Rasmus right now, I would not go for the move right now and just wait for the start finish line. Try to get a really, really good run and clear himself away just before turn number one. And if I'm actually getting that outside run, well, that would be even better. One more chance as they have lost the toe from in front. Rasmus clears on by and he'll take the spot. Will Brophy go for the switch is the question. All this is well, Blocker is ready to join elite company out of the final corner goes adam blocker move over jonathan goat there is a second two-time winner of the hyperx indianapolis 500. blocker becomes the second two-time winner of this event an incredible drive from adam blocker What a performance, man. What a performance. What a performance indeed. It's a rare feat to be able to win two. He's done just that. It's a rare feat to win from the pole. He just did that to become the second driver to do that. And now he gets to celebrate what would be a huge victory for the season. An incredible performance from Adam Blocker. Not only winning from the pole, winning more than once in the Indianapolis 500, but again, being the only driver who would win back to back to back again, like three times in a row. And he's the only one who actually did that prior to this race. And now he's just, you know, restating the dominance that is Adam Blocker at the IndyCar series here at Lionheart. 144 lead laps for Adam Blocker in this one tonight. Absolute domination. And I believe that may also be a best for this event. As he does a Polish victory lap here in this one, let's take a look at your race results presented by Carnox. Locker wins by 2.6 seconds over Connor Harrington with Henry Bennett in third. Andrew Kinsella, Tyra Graff round out the top five. What a top five for Graff. Matt Taylor finishes in sixth with Brian Beard, Mike Rasmus, Jason Brophy, and Tony Schauen rounding out your top 10. 11th spot goes to Adam Frazier, Richie Hearn, Scott Holmes, Luis Gonzalez, Nunez, and Matt Houston, the last on the lead lap with Samuel Ryman, Justin Weaver, Lionel Kalisto, Ryan Otis, and Joe Branch finishing inside the top 20. Some trouble for Chris Fowler early on, still recovers to 21st. Larkamp recovers from his multiple issues to finish 22nd. Ricky Harden, Joshua Chin, Brian Greenlee, Ron Hacker, Aaron Morgan, Sage Karam, Jay Brent, Damon Martinez round out the top 30, and the last of your starters for James Grahula, Brian Carey, Chris Stouffer, Mike Rigney, and Ken Hacker. Incredible finish today from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, as that brings us into our HyperX post-race show, because the Lionheart Racing Series is powered by HyperX, makers of premier gaming gear like the legendary ultra-comfortable cloud line of gaming headsets. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers. For more information on HyperX products, visit HyperXGaming.com and don't forget to use the promo code LionHRT15 for 15% off orders. Adam Blocker continuing his celebrations and his trek to HyperX Victory Lane. 
and a chance to bring home the trophy and uh, make the two to prizes and drink some milk after what was a solid performance today. Lorenzo, what a drive from Adam Blanker. What a drive. Per basically a perfect week for Adam Blanker in terms of, you know, standing test. He decides to celebrate throwing that car into the wall. You can see now Harry Bennett and Andrew Kinsella joining him on the donuts. So uh, that is a well-earned victory for Adam Blocker. And uh, that will open up the seats even more to Connor Harrington in terms of team standings. And, and what a race so far. What a dominant performance. But I really am looking forward to see also the team standings in terms of... Uh, what the points have brought us here after we have the results compiled. Absolutely. One of the drivers standing by right now, I believe, is Connor Harrington. After what was an impressive drive from him as well, second place, 39 laps led for him. Private label team hype. Let's bring him on in for HyperX post race show. Connor Harrington now joins the broadcast booth. Connor, do you have a copy? Yeah. Connor, first things first. Second place run today. How are you feeling about your performance? Uh, you know, always good to get a, a podium for our private label uh, team hype Ethica um, Indy car. I don't know, just traffic just didn't work out great for us. Kind of, uh, kind of a bummer. Um, I think we would have had something. It would have been a fun uh, end uh, end of the race if if you just didn't get all the breaks of the traffic. So we take we take the second and we move on it's good points it's better than getting junked in one of these things so uh good points for us today good points and a good run overall but talk us through the battle with you and adam blocker because you kept within range from him you clawed your way into second position talk us through you and trying to keep up and battle with blocker um, I mean, it's it really, I mean, it's, I felt like he was just trying to stay behind and, uh, and fuel save, uh, trying to have a shorter stop. And we, we just lost the, we lost the race in the, in the last pit stop. I was the second slower on the lane and, and he had, I think he took a shorter stop with less fuel. So, uh, he, that just got us too far behind and the lap traffic before that wasn't, uh, wasn't a big help either. So I don't know. It was just the package is just the front two swap or you save fuel and uh, everybody else behind just you just hold on for dear life and hope you don't plow down at the fence so um but it was uh, it was fun for for a little while and then it just kind of became just sort of riding around indeed and now good points day overall for yourself in this race and now it's the matter of continuing the season connor where do you look to head from from here or especially with you trying to carry momentum forward on the season try and continue this on forward as you go next to the milwaukee mile uh yeah i don't know um flat track racing probably not my my strong suit um you know at some point i think uh you know some other people are gonna have to have start have to have uh, start having some pretty bad luck uh for for me to have a chance uh to to win the championship it's getting very late early especially after last week so um you know we just got to keep plugging away at it um you know we we're having a we had a pretty good team day for for ourselves so i think we gained a little bit in the points there too so we can't be too upset but um you know it, it's just, we need some luck to go our way so congratulations on the run today connor Yep, thanks, guys. Connor Harrington, second today, but now from HyperX Victory Lane, Adam Blocker put on a dominating performance for the HyperX Indianapolis 500 to be able to lead 144 laps, to be able to add himself to the record books as the second two time winner. And now it's celebration time. Adam Blocker now joins us in the broadcast booth from HyperX Victory Lane. Adam, You've made history. How does it feel to become the second two-time winner and the second driver to win from the pole in the history of this event? Uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. Um, just a big relief that um, no, no cautions or anything like that shaked it up in the last last sense. I knew I would have a shot with how important track position was. And um, yeah, the the first, first uh, half of the race, basically, Sage um, unfortunately had his computer crash, so he wasn't able to grid, but it meant that he was basically up there with the leaders with how things kind of shaked out. So, um, 
yeah, I, I just decided, you know, to let him leave. There was no point in really fighting him. And I was going to use him to save fuel off of. And I was doing that. And it was working pretty good. And then, um, yeah, I mean, and once we got to the middle stages of the race, there was, there was a point where we were going to have to hit a big fuel number. I think the caution with like 95 to go or something like that. Um, so I was just going to, I let Connor lead and I was going to save fuel off of him. I'm not sure if I could have hit the fuel number to make it to the end, especially with how hard it was to follow on old tires. Like you need to follow close to get uh, close following distance to get, make a good fuel number. And I wasn't quite doing that. So I was happy we got a caution with like 86 to go. And yeah, then it was just a duel between Connor and I. Yes, indeed. It became that duel. But in the end, you persevered and nailed the strategy. How difficult was that? to nail it lap after lap because you were able to break away many cases from Connor Harrington, especially after the pit stop sequences. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was honestly not expecting to break away from him. I was just, you know, focused on hitting my marks. Um, I knew it was going to be pretty tough to break away, but in that second pit stop, I'm not sure if he was sideways in his box or just less aggressive on pit in or something, but I wasn't, I didn't like nail it, but I was, I was kind of conservative but because I didn't want to, I made sure I didn't want to make a big mistake. But you know, I was still pretty close to to what I felt was a good, you know, both getting in my box and and getting in pit lane. So yeah, and then after that, it was just managing lap traffic. He almost had a chance um, with how he caught lap traffic. He almost got my toe. But yeah, I was just having to be really aggressive with lap traffic to make sure that um I kept him behind. And yeah, thankfully the the lap traffic was pretty cooperative. Indeed, it was cooperative today. Have to ask you this, of course, with the tradition of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, what kind of milk will you be drinking with this victory tonight? Uh, I need to go. Honestly, I don't really have any, so um, yeah, just find some whiskey or something else to drink. But yeah, it'll be it'll be good. Um, yeah, I just want to thank all the team for uh, you know for the efforts. John Vogel, Henry, Andrew, um, uh, Tony, Joe, and, and Brian, everybody. You know, most of us had a good race. Unfortunately, a couple of us had issues on the, at the beginning. But yeah, one, three, four is a is a great result, and yeah, hopefully we can carry this momentum into to future races. Congratulations, Adam, on the victory today. A historical day in Linehart competition. Adam Blocker, your race winner today by two point six 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 seconds over Connor Harrington. What a performance by him today! What a drive. By him overall, Lorenzo, I want to turn to you for a moment. Incredible, mm -hmm. to say the least, the history that was made today. Yeah, it was very, very incredible uh, to see the dominance out of Adam Blocker, you know, leading the majority of the laps in this race and uh, giving no room whatsoever for error for the underdrives to come and contend. Connor did a really good job to try to get close with that, but uh, again, Adam was just so so good not giving one inch to any other driver specifically and being the second driver to win uh twice in this multiple times in this uh in this race second driver to win from the pole position second second time he he was the owner of the other back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back winner so putting that another one to that uh to his record book so amazing performance for him this week and an amazing performance as well from one of his fellow friends, Andrew Kinsella, who came away with fourth position today. I believe he's also now standing by after what was an intriguing race from the 41 machine. Andrew Kinsella is with Lorenzo Bonder. So, Andrew, let me just talk. I want you to talk us through the drive that you had, man. You really had a really good start. How to claw yourself back up a few spots because you were bumped out back because of the pit lanes but i think all in all p4 it's a result that you you and your team are pretty much satisfied with yeah definitely overall satisfied um the the plan for the first 100 laps or so was just to cruise but um then when when we saw what, how the race was playing out and um adam and connor sort of got clear on that uh second stint of the race there um Basically, I, I had saved a lot of fuel the first stint, went longer than everyone else, and then um, was able to, to use some of that fuel to get back into him. And it was looking like a three-horse race almost for a little while there. Um, Henry started to close back up on us as well. Um, and then, yeah, just just missed slightly on some restarts and pit um, cycles where it uh, didn't 
quite go the way we wanted. Um, I think if uh, Henry and I had been able to clear Tyler and Sam, and uh, I think it was Ryan Otis on that last restart, I think uh, we probably could have made it a, an interesting four-horse race uh, with Connor and Adam, because I think we were definitely just as fast as they were. Um, and certainly once we cleared all, all the other guys, we were going uh, basically the same speed as them. Uh, but yeah, overall, really happy. Uh, had a nice little battle there with Henry. We caught some lap cars with about 10 to go and uh, just didn't have any tires left on it to, to get back to him. But uh, congrats to Henry and uh, obviously congrats to Adam. Uh, really happy for the team uh, for that one. Right on. And uh, talk us through about your battle with the Henry Bennett. Did you guys decide to battle for the podium spot or you guys were trying to work yourself out to try to get closer to Connor Harrington in the final laps? Uh, uh, we, we knew that, that there was no way that we could get uh, close enough to really do anything. Um, uh, we didn't re even, I don't think we even considered really working together. Um, he was going for it and so was I. Um, it was everything I could just to close in on him. Uh, and I think I got it to within a, a couple of tenths at one point, but that was it. Um, yeah. It, yeah, as I said, the, the lap cars and, and the traffic just didn't quite go our way uh, in Henry's way, but um, at the same time, yeah, we're, we're definitely very satisfied. We were up front all day, and it was uh, it was definitely a good race for both of us. Yeah, definitely. And again, on the point, and team, talking about team standings, you guys really had a really good performance so far, dominant performance, uh, to say the least. And where do you guys you, you see yourselves moving forward? Because there's still more than a half, a little bit more than a half of the championship left. And uh, where do you guys think the Adrenaline Motorsports Red Audi is pretty much comfortable with? Yeah, I mean, our goal at the start of the year was uh, was P1 in the team championship, and, and it remains our goal. Um, I don't think there's any secret about that. I think um, Brian, Henry, and I, we all have the talent to take it to, to Connor, Josh, and uh, Jason, and I think it's going to be a, a battle right to the end between our two teams. Um, I think that each team ha has some strengths and some weaknesses on different tracks and different track types, and uh, I think that especially after this race where... Uh, where uh, the the team hype guys uh, had a little bit of a little bit of more misfortune than we did, um, even though Connor did finish in front of both Henry and I, um, I think that um, it's probably going to result in us being reset almost close, at least close to to even terms. So I think um, for us, anything short of uh, of a P1 in the championship is going to be a disappointment. All right, fair point and injury. Before we let you go, anybody and you give any shout outs from the Adrenaline Motorsports outing or anybody watching? Yeah, just uh, just thanks to everyone at um, uh, at Adrenaline. Uh, we always work so well together as a team, and it's a pleasure racing with these guys at, uh, week in, week out in, in Lionheart. Uh, can't say enough about my teammates. And uh, thanks to uh, HyperX, uh, Butt Kicker, and all of our sponsors, and especially uh, thanks to you guys for putting on uh week after week you guys put on an amazing broadcast um and i can't wait to watch this one back as well so uh big shout out to you guys all right then uh, again andrew uh, thank you so much congratulations on p4 and can't wait to see what you do in the next one thanks lorenzo all right back to you justin that's andrew kinsella once again coming away with a fourth place finish in this one as Real quickly, get the opportunity to chat with the fifth place finisher as well. Extended HyperX post race show coverage here. Tyler Graf, have to ask you this the emotions of a top five run. A lot of fans watching along were looking to cheer you on in this one, and we're hoping to see you have this top five. How does it feel to come away with the top five here in the HyperX Indianapolis 500? Uh, man, I'm, I'm absolutely elated right now. Um, the way, the way this season's gone, if, if, I, I've, like Marshall Pruitt calls it the cartoon anvil. Um, I've definitely had it. Um, if if the season would go the way, um, if I would finish where I would, would have should have effectively been in all the races this season, I'd be like probably mid top ten. Um, but I'm I'm just I'm so happy. Um, I've I've worked so hard this last couple of weeks. I worked so hard on getting a decent qualifying spot. Um, it, it's it's just it's just awesome. I'm it's definitely a little bit of a pick me up confidence booster that i needed uh this season absolutely you had strong performances in the retro series this week you had a strong performance now here in the indycar series congratulations tower on the performance tonight 
Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Checking in with Topper Graf, coming away with the fifth place run. Lorenzo, your final thoughts on this one as our first Triple Crown is now in the books. Our first Triple Crown is now in the books, and we still have two more to go, which is Michigan and then Pocono. But it's going to be a very interesting race. Nevertheless, I can't wait to see what the drivers will do. But uh, for now, Adam Blocker, what a weekend. And uh, I can't wait to see what the other drivers will. Uh, not Pocono, it's actually Auto Club, as you guys see the the schedule over here it was like correction but nevertheless it's going to be a very interesting schedule the second half of the season because the next track we go into the milwaukee mile marks the first half of the season it's going to be absolutely entertaining to say the very least to see how the next few weeks fare out especially the month of july all the way through to august with milwaukee silverstone texas phillip island a wild stretch of races coming up but on that note we like to thank the many sponsors who are part of the Lionheart Racing Series and its competitions. For Sim Racers, the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 Simulation or Simulation Kit rather adds a missing driver to car connection, bringing more realism to your sessions. By actively responding to in-game audio, you can feel the track like never before, providing increased vehicle handling and faster lap times. Are you ready for the most immersive experience in sim racing? For more information, visit thebuttkicker.com and don't forget to use the promo code LION2021 for 20% off orders. The Lionheart Racing Series is powered by HyperX, makers of premier gaming gear like the legendary ultra-comfortable cloud line of gaming headsets. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers. For more information on HyperX products, visit hyperxgaming.com and don't forget to use the promo code LIONHRT15 for 15% off orders. The sim experience AccuPorts Pro V2 is the premier professional simulation racing steering system. The key to its incredible realism is the groundbreaking direct drive motor control system, providing a driving experience that's second only to the real thing. For more information on the entire sim experience ecosystem, visit simexperience.com. Minus 273 is the premier name in karting gloves. Their industry lean gloves are super lightweight and durable, made of breathable poly spandex. Whether you're a kart or sim racer, Minus 273 gives you the control to reach victory lane. For more information on Minus 273's full line of gloves and apparel, visit minus273.biz. Don't forget to also use the promo code minus273LHRS15 for 15% off orders. Looking for entertaining sim racing content? Look no further than the DMLC Racing Channel. Follow former Lionheart Retro Series Driver of the Year Mark Cohn's racing escapades as he battles for wins and avoids wrecks with cat-like reflexes, all while providing commentary, sure, to provide to make you laugh, cry, or both. Follow along by subscribing to the DMLC Racing Channel on YouTube and like his Facebook page at the DMLCRacingChannel.com. And it's not just those five names, but many more and all the partners at the Lionheart Racing Series who are a part of all this work. To learn more about them, visit LionheartRacingSeries.com. You can also find out more information on the three competitions that the Lionheart Racing Series Sinking Body runs. Lots more of Lionheart action to come, including tomorrow night when the Speedway Series heads over to Kentucky Speedway. Be sure to tune in on RaceBot TV and ESTV to follow along with the action. Be sure to keep up with Lionheart on social media at Lionheart Series. ESTV also has your esports needs, but RaceBot TV has your V Motorsports action covered. Be sure to follow along on Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and more. But with that, it's time to say goodbye. For Istvan Balu, for Hugo Weez, for Renzo Bonder, I'm Justin Prince. Saying so long, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for watching Racebot TV and ESTV's coverage of the HyperX Indianapolis 500, where Adam Blocker becomes a two-time winner of this 500-mile extravaganza. <laughs>